Mike with that West up for grabs. The San Diego Chargers going into today with a record of 3-0. With less than a minute left at Foxborough, they are trailing the Patriots by the score of 27-21. Chargers looking to make it back off a one-yard run by Clarence Williams. And it makes it very important for this game, mainly because Denver and Seattle are chasing San Diego, leading the AFC West. The loser here might have trouble getting back in the race. Here's a look at that touchdown as Fouts will hand off to Clarence Williams, and this plus the extra point will cut it down to the 27-21 situation they are right now in the final minute of the play at Foxborough. Well, Mike, as a one-time receiver in the National Football League, I know that you admire the receiving combination of Seattle last week, combination of Jim Zorn and Steve Largent, and whipping Oakland 27 to 10. And the Seahawks didn't get off to a good start passing, but Jim Zorn had a big day against Oakland last week. Over 200 yards, three touchdown passes. Steve Largent, the leading wide receiver in the National Football League as far as receptions last year, 71, had five catches last week for 139 yards and two touchdowns, and they were the key against Oakland. At the same time, the Broncos were defeating the Atlanta Falcons in overtime off a solid performance by Bronco quarterback Norris Weiss. And there has been a controversy here in Denver. The number one quarterback job has been taken over by Weiss from Craig Morton, who took him to the Super Bowl. And the jury's still out on Weiss. We'll watch him very closely today. And Denver able to win it in overtime on the field goal by Jim Turner, who is now the number two leading scorer in the history of the National Football League. And also the last time Seattle and Denver met last season, Jim Turner kicked a field goal in overtime to win it. He could be the guy that does it again today. We have Denver and Seattle upcoming here on NBC, and we'll be back right after these words. King Five, first in the Northwest. NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League, the American Football Conference. Brought to you by Schlitz. Make the most of now, from the life you live to the beer you drink. Go for it. By Chrysler Corporation. See the mileage makers at your Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth dealers. By Magnavox. Trade in your old TV for Magnavox Touch Tune Color Television. And by your Sears Tire and Auto Center. Home of straight talk, good values, and satisfaction. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. This is Marv Albert along with Mike Hafner, and we're set for the tough defense of the Denver Broncos against the high-powered Seahawks of Seattle. The referee is Gene Barth, the umpire, Tom Myers, head linesman, Jerry Bergman, the line judge, Bob McLaughlin, the back judge, Ben Tompkins, the side judge, Dean Luck, the field judge, Fritz Grant. Denver won the toss. They will receive Bernard Jackson is back deep along with rookie Zachary Dixon, who has just re-signed during the course of the week. And you can hear the crowd right at the start as Eflin Herrera gets set to kick it off. And they're going crazy in Denver, Marv. It's Orange Sunday as, as the mayor has designated, and these fans in Denver, as most of the country knows, just go crazy for their club. Sellout crowd better than 75,000 on hand, and we're underway. Zachary Dixon and the recovery by the Seahawks. Zach Dixon was just picked up and signed by the Broncos. And there's a rookie who has made a mistake and given the Seahawks perfect field position. Dixon again filling in for the injured Preston who went down with a knee injury is now on injured reserve and Zach Dixon out of Temple gets his baptism in the NFL and it costs the Denver Broncos right off the bat. Harry Justin back up. Out of Oregon State. Off of recovery. And 
the Seahawks go to work. This is Sherman Smith picking up three yards on the play. Jack Petir starting with Sherman Smith and Dan Dorning at the running backs. Their quarterback is Jim Zorn coming off the superb day against Oakland. 277 yards, three TDs. Steve Largent, Sam McCullen, Brian Peets. Steve Largent, six receptions last week, two touchdowns. He is one of the best in the NFL. It is a second and seven for Seattle. The Broncos coughing it up off the opening kickoff. And Zorn to throw on second down, and he completes it. Duke Ferguson, wide receiver, a three-year pro out of San Diego State, bumped out of bounds by Lewis Wright. Seattle with Nick Bebout, Steve August at the tackles, Tom Lynch, Ron Coder at the guard for the center, John Yarno. Bebout back in the lineup after being injured. He's going to help that Seahawk offensive line. It is a first down for the Seahawks at the Denver 17. Larkin to the left and Ferguson to the right. Going to replace the injured David Sims last week in motion. And Sherman Smith off the play out. Down to the 15. Marty Chavis, the defensive left end, number 79, on the tackle. As you look at that front three of them. And Bryson Manor has taken over for the departed Lyle Alzado and has been a big force for the Broncos. There are the linebackers, Swenson, Rizzo, Gratishar, Jackson. Gratishar won every MVP award for defense last year. That's the best crew in the NFL right there. Jackson making it back after missing the game against Atlanta with a strained catch, second and eight from the 15 for the Seahawks of Seattle. That's Dornick fighting his way down to the 11 yard line. Dan Dornick, a second year pro out of Washington State, picked up in a mystifying trade with the New York Giants. Mystifying to Giant fans back in New York as you look at that Denver secondary. Steve Foley, Billy Thompson, been in the league 11 years, Bernard Jackson, and Louis Wright, who most receivers say is the best that ever played corner. It is a third and four for the Seahawks. At the Denver 11, Ferguson, wide left, the tight end is Brian Pierce. The setbacks are Smith and Dorney. An official timeout as John Yarno wanted a new football. So it's warm here today. Surprisingly warm for Denver, Colorado, and I think a little sweat dropped on the ball. So here's the third and four. Zorn to throw. Goes for the end zone, but it is incomplete. The intended receiver was Ferguson. Ferguson slipped down that time, and Zorn had no chance. All he could do was throw it away. He'll have to settle for a three-point try. Efren Herrera with number 10, Zorn to hold. Herrera, the five-year man out of UCLA, four out of six thus far this season, has hit from 34, 32, 46, and 20. This from 28 yards out. Big left for the Bronco defense. They held him to a field goal after that terrible turnover. Herrera puts it through. 28-yard field goal. The Seattle Seahawks with a happy coach, Jack Patera, although he really will smile to show his happiness. Able to jump in front of the Broncos at the uh, this juncture, the score is 3-0. Ah, there's the secret to our success. The pins <laughs> and the spotting board. I'm Marv Albert. This is Mike Hafter as we are all set for the kickoff of Efren Herrera with Chris Payne and Zachary Dixon back deep. And here is Herrera. And once again taken by Dixon to the 10. And down across the 20 yard line. So Zachary Dixon with a second opportunity. He coughed it up on the opening kickoff tripped up by Peter Cronin. For the first time, Denver will go to work first down at the 21-yard line. Rob Lytle replacing the injured Dave Preston and Jim Jensen in that backfield with Norris Weiss at quarterback. Rick Upchurch, Haven Moses, and Riley Odom. There's three great ones, and Upchurch is the game breaker. Three nothing. Seahawks lead 28-yard field goal by Efren Herrera early in this first quarter doing it. That's Moses peeling off. 
straight ahead move. Rod Lytle is coming off a badly sprained right knee. And he's replacing a guy who had a badly sprained right knee. New England Patriots able to hold on. So San Diego is beaten for the first time this season. They are now three and one. And as we mentioned right at the start, that AFC West should go right down to the wire. It's an important game for the Broncos and the Seahawks. The Seahawks can be two and two in just a game out. The Broncos, if they win, could tie San Diego. Second and four for Denver at their 27-yard line. They are trailing three nothing. This is Jensen trying to pick his way through out near the first down marker, but short by a yard. Terry Beeson, middle linebacker, making the stop as you take a look at the Denver offense. Of line. And Dave Studdard, they finally found a left tackle in Denver. He was a free agent who had been with Baltimore last year. That's the problem area, though, for the Broncos, that offensive line. It is a third and one for the Broncos. John Keyworth checks in along with the extra tight end, Ron Egloff. Of course, Red Miller likes to do a lot of shuffling, particularly in the backfield. There was a mix-up right there. You've got to get those things down. It's no time to be messing around at third and one. see where his progress was marked and he will be short as Beeson the middle linebacker was able to fill the hole as you look at the Seattle defensive line of Ernie Price Robert Hartburn Hardy Mano Tuyasasopo and Bill Gregory you did good on Tuyasasopo <laughs> two weeks in a row Mike he was their first round draft choice and a outstanding football player. This is Luke Prestridge, rookie out of Baylor, getting sent to Budawood. Back deep is Jeff Moore. And that's Moore across the 30 to the 40. And out of bounds. Good run back by Jeff Moore. So there's a timeout on the field with the score. The Seattle Seahawks three and the Denver Broncos nothing. NBC Sports brings you all the drama and excitement of Major League Baseball's League Championship Series with primetime coverage of the National League Series beginning Tuesday, October 2nd. NBC Sports, we're proud. Next Saturday here on NBC, the final weekend of NBC's regular season coverage of Major League Baseball leading to the League Championship Series, which will be covered by NBC Sports. And things really going down to the wire. Three divisions. The ball posted on baseball scores as they come across. Baltimore did clinch it yesterday. All right, Zorn with the pitch. This is Dorning outside, out to midfield. Dan Dorning, who had a superb game last week in his first start, replacing the injured David Sims, was run out by the combination of Radishar and the strong safety, Bill Thompson. It's tough to run outside against the Broncos. There's the final, some final scores, and I had Buffalo when they scored 51. So the Jets know what the Buffalo offense can do. Sensational rookie Jerry Butler caught four touchdown passes thrown by Joe Ferguson to lead Buffalo. Second and five from the 48. Smith and Dorning, the running back. That's Larger moving. And here's Dorning again. Picked up four on the play. Reuben Carter, Barney Chavis making the stop. Number 79 is Chavis, seven-year man out of South Carolina State. Well, the Steelers did not have an easy time in getting by the Baltimore Colts. Baltimore had a 13-10 lead going into that fourth period, and the Steelers pulled it out again. That's three weeks in a row. Crowd urging on the Denver defensive unit, third and one. Up. Well, let's see. A penalty marker is down. It's close to the first down. And I think Seattle moved before the snap, and I was right. Watch for some moving in that offensive line by Seattle. It is a procedure penalty against the Seahawks. Lodgen talking it over with the officials. Here's the call. Illegal head, Bob, quarterback. We had it perfect. 
Zorn bobbed his head before the snap. He's been warned about that in the first three games of the season and said if he keeps on doing it, they will call it. And they did, in fact, on that play. It is a third and six now, back at the 47 yard line. McCullough slot left. Smith and Dornick are back. And here's Zorn to throw. Incomplete. The intended receiver fell down. As Lewis White was covering on the play, Dornick, the intended receiver, out on the left line. Dornick slipped and fell. Zorn was looking just for the first down, had that receiver in mind all the time. When he went down, Zorn had no chance. Kansas City leading the Oakland Raiders 21 0 in the third quarter. We saw Oakland lose to Seattle convincingly last week, although that last touchdown that the Seahawks went for has uh, created some controversy. Herman Weaver punting away and keeping it away from Rick Earp Upchurch. And uh, the roll is down across the five yard line. Outstanding punt by Herman Weaver, who was here in the Denver Bronco camp last year, beaten out by Bucky Dilts, who was subsequently beaten out by Luke Prestridge. A 50 yard punt by Weaver. A timeout is called. When we resume, it'll be Denver's football. They killed his wife, they killed his child, and now he rides for revenge. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw. Josie Wales, first time on TV, Sunday. season after the Seahawks rolled up a record of nine and seven only their third year of existence and as a first and ten for Denver that field position and the Seahawks have put the pressure on the Bronco offense back at the four yard line Jensen and Lytle the running back Moses coming across and here's Lytle with short yardage that ball may have been jarred but Lytle able to hold on Robert Hartburn Hardy, number 75, making the stop on the play. Well, Detroit bounced back from the loss last week at the hands of the Jets to defeat Atlanta. And Atlanta looking so good last week in that comeback effort led by Steve Bartkowski. Atlanta, I'll bet five points, haven't separated all their wins and losses. Keyworth has come on. Lytle and Keyworth on the running backs. Second and nine at the five. Denver down three nothing. And this is Lytle following blockers and is able to get it out of danger. It was Paul Howard, number 60, leading Rob Lytle. And if Seattle is to stop the Denver Bronco running game and they have a fine fullback in Jim Jensen and a fine running back in Lytle out of Michigan, they're going to have to do it with their middle linebacker, Terry Beeson, and Beeson plays it well and at least gets into the flow, but Paul Howard, number 60, made a fine lead block. That'll get you yardage every time. Upchurch has come back, as you see, it is now a third and three. Upchurch points to the left side. Here's Lytle again on the sweep. Not able to get outside. Again led by Howard, but this time not able to lead the way. Cornell Webster, the left cornerback, in on the tackle and the Denver offensive unit hearing it from the crowd again the Seahawks able to contain it. And when you start on the five yard line it tends to limit what you can do offensively. You don't want to turn it over by throwing an interception and you want to run conservative running play so you don't have a fumble occur. That is Jeff Moore back deep awaiting the punt from Luke Prestridge. Prestridge has been getting the good hang time still working on his directional punt. Time, good hang time, and Moore takes it to the 45. Out to midfield. So Jeff Moore on the return, and a timeout has been called. 7:38 left in this first quarter. Seattle leading by the score of three nothing on the 28-yard field goal by Efren Herrera. We have seen excellent punting here in the first quarter. 52-yard boot by Prestridge. And they made the right decision between Bucky Diltz, who now punts for Baltimore. The Broncos traded him away. Prestridge has given them that big foot that they need. Zorn has a first down at the 50. Dorning and Smith are the running backs. 
And Zorn throws and overthrows Sherman Smith on the first down play. He was covered by the free safety, Bernard Jackson. The blitz was on that time, and Tom Jackson, number 57 for the Broncos, put the pressure on Zorn, made him throw much sooner than he wanted to, and that was the reason for the incompletion. Zorn thus far, one for four for 10 yards. He's at 53 percent for the season. Got off to the slow start, intercepted six times over the first two games. Now has four touchdowns coming off the solid outing against Oakland. Here's Dornick. Now Dornick to the 47, tripped up by the outside linebacker on the left. Bob Swenson along with strong safety. Bill Thompson. This was a draw play. Off the play action pass, and you'll watch Zorn, who handles the ball as well as any quarterback on the run fakes. There's the fake inside to Sherman Smith. Now Dornick waiting for the ball. A good fake, but it didn't fool the Broncos' Bob Swenson. He played it well. Third and six, Broncos of Charlie Weston as the extra defensive back. against the five backs all the way and now watch Louis Wright is beaten but dives in front knocks it away and that is an outstanding cornerback play and Thunderfoot Weaver pops one again able to keep it away from Upchurch but this one carries to the end zone and they will bring it out for Weaver a 47 yard punt. and the Broncos with Norris Weiss checking back in will take over at their 20 yard line next Saturday Major League Baseball game of the week this is the final weekend of regular season coverage so we'll have a big one for you on Saturday and keep in mind the league championship series to be seen here on NBC beginning next week it's baseball excitement time and we'll throw some scores at you Expos have defeated the Phillies 7 4 while the Pirates uh, lead the Cubs 6 nothing top of the third Wild race in the National League East. Off the play action, Reese is hauled down. Number 58, the middle linebacker, Terry Beeson, a three-year pro out of Kansas, getting to East. And Terry Beeson and the rest of the Seahawks defense aren't known for their blitzing, but they have obviously seen the films against Denver. And Norris Weiss has had problems handling the blitz. And watch Beeson 58, along with his partners, and Beeson is there for the sack. Norris Weiss never had a chance to look downfield for his receivers. And Seattle's playing it right against a weak Denver offensive line. It is a second and 18 back at the 12. Carl Eller, number 77, is now in on right defensive end. Keyworth is back in the Denver backfield. Weiss looking and pops one off as Keyworth with just a short pickup. Seattle covering very well. Norris Weiss tried to set up a screen pass to his fullback that time, and he did not fool the Seattle Seahawks defense, especially cornerback Dave Brown, who didn't go with the wide receiver deep, just stayed there to stop the screen. Five and a half remaining in this first quarter. Correction, I said Carlella number 70, uh, 70 is number 71 with Gregory number 77. Julian Sopo. Hardy and Price in that front four for Seattle. That is Upchurch in motion. It's a third and 16. 14. We swift time. And it completes to Upchurch, who is immediately hauled down. Good low tackle to bring down Rick Upchurch. And again, the Broncos will have to punt away. Audrey Beeman, the strong safety. Had, had three wide receivers in in that time Marvin it didn't fool Seattle again and the Broncos are having problems with offense and field position Jeff Moore back awaiting this loop Seahawks lead a three nothing bad snap and to be gobbled up and a good play by Prestridge who unleashes a beauty here's Moore at the 25 out 
to the 35. Porter's got the sideline. And he's bumped out of bounds. A bad snap by Prescott. Still, he was able to get it away. Gorgeous run back by Moore as we get another look at this 55-yard punt. A lot of times when you get a bad snap, but the adrenaline starts pumping on the punter. He gets off a 55-yarder, but he outkicked his coverage, Marv, and he almost gave him a chance to run it all the way back. Moore now gets outside the coverage. You'll see that Louis Wright ran past him, and now he gets outside. And he's almost got a shot to go all the way if it wouldn't have been for Prestridge, who pushed him out of bounds. We have four and a half left first quarter. Seahawks lead 3-0. There's Craig Morton, who these days is number two behind Norris Weiss after leading the Broncos to two AFC West titles, including a Super Bowl berth. Seattle in possession, first down at the 48-yard line. This is Zorn off the play action. And he completes to Sherman Smith to the 40. And out of bounds at the 36-yard line. A first down and more. Lewis Wright running him out. Very effective to throw on first down in the National Football League. Jim Zorn with the play action fake. And he's going to Sherman Smith on a bit of a screen up the middle. And I want you to watch an outstanding move by Sherman Smith after he bobbled the ball. He leaves Tommy Jackson looking for his shoes and got outside and up for a first down, a fine play, and a fine call by Jim Zorn. Smith, awesome, coming out of that backfield. Leaves the Seahawks in both rushing and pass receiving. First down play again. This time Smith on the ground to the 34-yard line. You'll notice the trend by the Seattle offense. They run inside. They know better than to run outside against the quick Bronco linebackers. So the rushing game for Seattle today will be inside the tackles, and they do it as well as any club in, in the entire NFL. Bryson Bonner made that last stop, second and eight, at the 34-yard line. Charlie West has come on as the extra defensive back as Rizzo departs. Setbacks are Dorning to the left, Smith to the right. Long count by Zorn. Changing the play, I think, Mark. Smith, 30 yard line and hit down hard at the 30. About four short of a first down. The right outside linebacker, number 57, Tom Jackson, seven year man out of the University of Louisville, making the stop. That'll make a great matchup for the entire day. 47 Sherman Smith of Seattle against 57 Tom Jackson of the Broncos. Two outstanding athletes going at it head to head today. All right, Micah, third and four. They spotted. At the Denver 30, the Seahawks lead 3 0. And rookie Zachary Wilson caught that the opening kickoff for the back of the back to Hudson Herrera field goal from 28 yards out. Here's Gordon straight up the middle, got the first down, and they fool the Marcos. Swenson, the left outside linebacker, number 51, able to bring down Dornick. And I told you, Seattle runs inside as well as any club in the league. Watch Tom Jackson. That's the key block. They must block Jackson in order for Dornick to make the play. And there's the block that springs him for a big gain inside. Nick Bebout with the down block from tackle, and it was a perfect play. Eight yard advance for Dornick. He's averaging three and a half per carry. He's got a first down now at the Denver 22 yard line. That's Dornick peeling off. Smith on the move. And a good move by Sherman Smith inside the 15 yard line. Crowd getting a bit restless here about the Denver defensive play. Rizzo and Jackson were able to bring down Sherman Smith, but the Seahawks game plan very effective to this point. Run up inside those tackles and Sherman Smith and Dornick have been a force. A second and three for Seattle. Ferguson left, large and right. Again, it's Smith. He is gang tackled short of a first down. David Sims yet to see action. He was scratched last week because of a neck bruise. Dorning started in place of Sims, who only led the National Football League in touchdowns scored last year, although he missed four games. And it's going to be tough to get Dorning out of that lineup. The entire running back core for the Seahawks is one of the best young crews in the National Football League, and they're showing their effectiveness. 15 left first quarter. Third and two. The 
Seattle. This capacity crowd urging the Bronco defense to get it on. And uh, they do the job. Led by Bunny Cable stopping Smith on his attempt to get that first down. Also, Kit Lathrop, number 75 for the Broncos, who had come in in that short yardage situation, got the big hit upstairs. And if you're trying to gain one yard, you don't want the guy to fall forward. You need that tackler up around the shoulder pads to stop him. Lathrop was there to do it. Steve Rabel has come on out for the Seahawks. As you look at Red Miller, the coach of the Denver Broncos. He can't go out and make the tackle for him. <laughs> it is a four and a one. A fumble on the snap. Penalty flags thrown down. I, I think Denver jumped too soon that time, Marv. We're going to have to wait and see if they were drawn offside. But I think the Bronco defense jumped, and I was right. Indication by the referee Gene Barth as we get another look at that play. Kit Lathrop 75 got his nose over that ball before the snap. That caused the fumble and therefore the five yard penalty. Jim Zorn was lucky that time. A break for the Seahawks. They pick up the first down. Interior lineman defense upside first down. It is a first and goal at the seven yard line. Our camera crew was better than the referees. They didn't even know who jumped and our camera guys got it right on the butt. Yes, you know, when they don't uh, reveal the number, they don't know. Here's McCullum to the left, lock it right. Dornick, the setback behind Zorn. Now this is Dornick. Not able to make the move outside. Hit by Steve Foley, the right quarterback. The ball was uh, jarred loose over the sideline. And a penalty marker thrown down as Dorning took a pretty hard shot. And I told you you can't run outside against the Broncos. They're just too tough, but they can sure, sure, sure move when you get that yellow penalty flag on the ground. And a personal foul being handed out. It appeared to be Tom Jackson who came over after the uh, initial hit was made. Watch Dornink's back foot. It slides out of bounds after Steve Foley gives him a heck of a shot to stop him. Now you'll watch. He's out of bounds now, and he shouldn't be hit. Foul, late hit Ooh, Jackson, oh. Defense, first down. You can't throw that arm in there like that. You'll get caught every time. Jackson's a very emotional player, but you can't afford 15-yard penalties in that situation. Makes for a first and goal. They move it up to the five-yard line. Ferguson left, Roger right. 35 seconds left in this first quarter, and the Seahawks are threatening. They lead it 3-0. Here's Dornick. Touchdown. Dan Dornick off the right side, and the Seahawks have taken a nine. And again, the place to run against the Denver Broncos is inside the tackles. Watch Dan Dornick. He just waits for the blocking to fold in, and he walks into the end zone, out of the arms of Tom Jackson, 57, and then slams it and says, in your face, Broncos. Efren Herrera with Jim Zorn holding. Herrera, five out of six in placements thus far this season. Someone moves, penalty marker down, will not matter as Herrera puts it right through. Broncos again over anxious, look to be Lewis Wright coming from the outside. Perfect call, Marv. It was Lewis Wright that jumped. Defense, number 20 offside. Points good, will penalize on the kickoff. So with 33 seconds, Remaining in this first quarter, the Broncos find themselves trailing the Seahawks of Seattle by the score of 10 nothing. Well, NBC Sports will continue its tradition of excellence in postseason baseball coverage. The League Championship Series getting underway on Tuesday, October the 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and that'll be in the stadium of uh, the National League West winner. So that means either Cincinnati or Houston. The series continuing Wednesday, the 3rd of October, with the National League game number two at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, followed by the first game of the American League playoffs from Baltimore at 8 o'clock. Eastern time. Herrera getting set to kick off. 
with Zachary Dixon and Chris Payne are back. And uh, that kickoff will come from the 40 uh, yard line off the penalty caught on Lewis right on that uh, placement. Seahawks with a 10 nothing lead. They come in with a record of one and two. They were beaten by San Diego 33 16 in the home opener. Losing in Miami 19 to 10. Last Sunday at the Kingdom in Seattle, they beat Oakland 27 to 10. And prior to last week, turnovers killed this ball club. Last week against the Raiders, they did not commit a turnover. And strangely, Denver, despite the awesome defensive record, has not come up with a turnover thus far this season. Line drive kick by Herrera, and it gets by Dixon, and they'll bring it out to the 20. He has really had a horror show here in the first quarter. He doesn't pay to be a rookie in the National Football League, according to Zach Dixon. Again, bad field position for the Broncos. And I'll tell you, that football takes crazy bounces. Zach Dixon looks like a shortstop, and all of a sudden, he gets the bad bounce back into the end zone. Even if it would have touched Dixon, the ball would have been called a muff and come out to the 20 yard line. No fumble. First and 10 now at the 20. There you see that Seattle scoring drive capped off by the five yard run for the TD by Dan Doney. Seattle leading it 10 0. Quarterback is Morris Weiss. Running backs are Lytle and Jensen Odoms in motion. Weiss to throw with time. And he throws deep. give Norris Weiss five seconds to throw this football. The questionable Bronco line has done his thing. Weiss has all time to throw and Riley Odoms can get deep on any strong safety. And that gets the Broncos out of a big hole and they needed something to fire them up. 45 yard pass play. The first quarter has now come to a close at the end of one. The score Seattle tip dead for nothing and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. watching King five Riley Odoms eight year man out of the University of Houston just hooked up with Norris Weiss on that 45 yard pass play Denver first and ten at the 35 Weiss slipping recovering and just does get it off it's incomplete Jensen lunging could not come up with it that's uh, one of those passes you will not see on the Bronco highlight film for uh, 79. Not really. This is Marv Albert with Mike Hafner. Capacity crowd better than 75,000 on hand here at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. And the Seahawks surprising people getting off to a 10 nothing lead. We are early second quarter. And a timeout now has been called by the Broncos. So we to the sidelines to talk it over. Look at the Oakland Raiders trailing Kansas City now 28 to nothing. The Raiders have gone into the dumper as they say. Stabler has been sacked six times. All right next Saturday here on NBC the premiere of Sports World's bowling mini series. Now eight teams each featuring some of the best men and women bowlers from past and present will be competing in Sports World's bowling mini series and that'll be from Irving Texas along with the current Michigan 125 coverage of the Indy type racing event from the Michigan International Speedway in Brooklyn Michigan. Many of the top Indy car drivers will be competing on this D-shaped course including Rick Mears and Al Unser, Bobby Unser, Johnny Rutherford. That is all next Saturday right here NBC's sports world it'll be a second and ten from the 35 yard line for the Denver Broncos and I might point out that Riley Odoms had gone 41 games until the Atlanta game with a catch in each of those games his streak was broken last week I bet he's happy now up churches left Moses right Lytle and Jensen are the running backs this is Lytle looking to follow his blockers but could not gets to the 34 yard line pick up of one on the play here's a final score Houston Oilers come from way back and in overtime defeat the Cincinnati Bengals who have been giving people problems as of late 30 to 27 on a 29 yard field goal by Tony Fritch. 
you and I will be in Houston next week with those great Cleveland Browns. Ought to be an interesting football game. Cincinnati had a 24 nothing lead in the second quarter. They lose it 30 27. Otis Armstrong has come on. Number 24 in that Bronco backfield for the first time. It's a third and nine. And Weiss throws deep. Howdy Margaret Allen with a big pass interference against the Seahawks. Carl Webster. There was no one in sight because Webster had uh, got a job on the tight end. Riley Odoms, who is shaken up, but apparently all right. It was safety blitz that time, number 44, Harris. John Harris was on the blitz for Seattle. Norris Weiss read it. And I'll tell you, Riley Odoms would have been wide open in the touch for a touchdown if Cornell Webster hadn't knocked him down, and that's the penalty. Odoms now replaced by Ron Egloff. There's Riley limping off. Nobody can hurt a guy that big. He'll be back. <laughs> so Egloff has come out on the Broncos now. First down at the Seattle 17-yard line. Lytle and Jensen now back in the backfield. They go to the slot left formation. And here's Lytle. Pulling to the 14-yard line. Sammy Green, the left side linebacker, making the stop. Seahawks have Price Hardy to Ayasa Sopo. Up front along with Eller. Green, Beeson, and Butler, the linebackers, Brown and Webster, and the corners, Beeman and Harris are the deep men. How are they doing in Kansas City and Oakland? Holy cow. <laughs> no contest there, folks. Second and seven for the Broncos. Opening that at second quarter. Denver trailing 10 0. <laughs> Off the play action, Reese throwing on the run, but Jackson is out of bounds at the 10. So a four-yard pickup. It will be a third and three. Very crucial play now for the Bronco offense. Seattle knows that they haven't got the outside speed in the running game. So I would imagine that pass is what Seattle will be looking for. Broncos come in with a record of two and one. They beat Cincinnati only 10 nothing here in Denver. Lost to L.A. in that uh, Thursday night game, 13-9. That off the uh, fumble late in the game by Craig Morton. Beat Atlanta in overtime last week on the Turner Field goal. Here on Orange Sunday are trailing the surprising Seahawks off the spinning move. Jensen goes short. I don't fathom that call at all. The Broncos offensive line is not blocked well for the run. The draw play would have been good with a good rushing club, but not for Denver. They should have put the ball up there. And here is Jim Turner. In his 16th year out of Utah State, he's 38 years old. He is now the second all-time leading scorer in the NFL. He is three out of five this season. He's hit from 37, 24, 24. He's missed from 27 and from 32. And this will be a 27-yard attempt. And it is good. So Turner puts it through, and the Broncos are on the board now trailing by the score of 10 to 3 with 1243 left in the second quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Even Anthony just got a Ram Tough Dodge van and a $400 check from Chrysler Corporation. I got a really good deal. When I bought the van, I didn't know about the rebate. So when I picked it up on Monday, I got another 400 off. Now's the time to deal. Chrysler Corporation's giving dealers big cash incentives they can pass on to you. And only Chrysler Corporation tops your deal with a $400 check. Not Ford, not GM. Come to Dodge and check it out. Radio Shack has slashed the price on one of our top-of-the-line stereo systems. Right now, save $310 on this impressive realistic hi-fi. You get this quality AM-FM stereo receiver, a pair of realistic tower speakers, and this precision belt drive turntable, all for only $579. A great entertainment bargain and a beautiful addition to your home. The sale-priced realistic stereo system, just $579, only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. Right, number 24, Al Hunter, three-year out of Notre Dame. Jeff Moore, the rookie out of Jackson State, at the top of your picture awaiting this Jim Turner kickoff. And this is Moore. Hunter. And on the recovery, out to the 10. 15. 20. Breaks loose. Out to the 34-yard line. Another beautiful run by Jeff Moore. And let's talk about this Denver coverage. 
One of the things that happens, Marv, is when the receiver drops the football, the special team coverage sees that, tends to slow up, doesn't get a good gauge on when he'll take off, and Moore finds a hole in the Broncos special team's kickoff unit and gets a big yardage and some good field position for the Seahawks. Backup linebacker Jim Ryan was able to bring him down. It's a first down for the Seahawks at their 34-yard line. The quarterback is on. The running backs are Gornick and Smith. Seahawks leading it 10-3. Art Zorn throwing deep. He's got Larkin. And Larkin down across the 25-yard line. What a gorgeous pattern was run by Steve Larkin. Larkin had the great day last week and a perfect time to throw the play action pass. First and 10. It was designed to Larkin all the way. Watch Zorn. He's going to make a, at least a halfway fake of the running play. Now he'll drop back and he knows Largent is his only deep receiver. He's got him split between Bernard Jackson and now look at the turnaround. Great concentration, tremendous hands, and great field position for the Seahawks. Last week, Largent set a club record, six receptions, 139 yards, and two touchdowns. Zorn this time swings it to Smith. He's in traffic and is tripped up. There's that matchup again, Tom Jackson against Sherman Smith. Jackson made the tackle and stopped it for no gain. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. It's second and about 11 at the Denver 26 yard line. Four minutes in, second quarter as they line up in the eye. Dorning in front of Smith. Larkin to the right. McCollum left. Second back coming through. And that Dorning cuts outside and is being chased. Beautiful fake by Zorn as Wright and Thompson chase Dorning out of bounds. Jim Zorn again on that delayed cross buck. He'll make the inside fake to Sherman Smith to draw the linebackers. You want to hold the linebackers and then Dornick waiting there for the handoff breaks to daylight which is outside and outruns the Broncos right side of the defense. Eight yard run by Dornick third and three for Seattle at the Denver 18. Seahawks lead at 10 three. Denver getting on the board capping off a 71 yard drive in seven plays. They had to settle for a Jim Turner field goal from 27 yards down. Handoff to Smith. Great second effort by Sherman Smith. No fancy work then by Zorn. And it was Smith who went up the middle. Bringing it near that first down marker. Chavis and Rizzo combined to make the stop. And I see several of the Seahawks indicating we're inches away. Just short that time and credit the second effort of 47 Sherman Smith. It is fourth and inches. Tight end Brian Peets checks back in. Rizzo departs. John Grant comes on for Denver. Smart call here, Marv. They've got a seven-point lead. They should go for it here. And it's Dornick. And he's got it. Dan Dornick picking up the first down. He is a six-foot-three, 210-pounder out of Washington State during the offseason, attending medical school. Replaced the injured David Sims last week. As we mentioned earlier, acquired from the New York Giants in a strange deal because the Giants in dire need of running backs, and yet they let Dornick go for a couple of future draft picks. Dornick could certainly help the Giants because he's doing a whole bunch for the Seahawks. First down at the 14. Dornick now nine carries, 35 yards. A column to the right, larger left. And this is Smith. Straight ahead, power move by Sherman Smith. Bronco, a defensive line is just getting blown out by the Seattle Seahawks. It was a tremendous surge there, and every one of the offensive linemen for Seattle was at least five, year, five yards down the field. It'll be a second and two down at the six-yard line. And there have been question marks going into this season. In fact, going into the last couple of games about that Seattle offensive line, they have looked very tough here in the first half. Beep out Lynch, Yano, Coder, and August doing the job. Second and six. McCullough moving over to the right and followed across by right. And here is Dornick as they keep it on the ground. This time he is stacked up. How 
Could have picked up a yard and then pushed back as the nose tackle Reuben Carter was all over Dan Dornan. He can't go to the well too often. I think the Broncos have finally realized that Seattle is going to run inside the tackles and they're going to have to stop it. Number 57, Tom Jackson, looking very upset, and he's not alone, you could be sure. This Bronco defense is not used to being shoved around the field like they have been in this first half. It is a third and a one. Down at the five. The left side as Dorning takes it in. What a fake by Zorn. Give credit to that offensive line of the Seahawks. They're all excited and happy. Nick Bebout leading the cheers. And Dornick, all he had to do was lean, and he was right in the end zone. Take a look at the surge of the offensive line by Seattle. Give these guys a bunch of credit. A great lead block by Sherman Smith and Dornick with his shoulder down is in the end zone and they've humiliated the Orange Crush defense. And this the number one ranked defense against the rush of the National Football League going in. Here is Herrera putting it right through and the Seattle Seahawks surprising people around the country when this score is flashed. They now lead the Denver Broncos 17 to 3 with 809 left. Second quarter. Time to trade in for Touch 2 at your Magnavox dealer now. Trade in your old set for Magnavox Touch Tune color television and save big Touch Tune television with a sharper color picture than ever before possible. And just for touching Touch Tune television, you'll be handed free this official National Football League manual. It's trade in for Touch Tune time. Trade and save at your Magnavox dealer now. Antifreeze. You never think about it or how it has to protect somebody beside you or what could happen without it. Stranded and no help for miles. Don't trust your luck. Don't trust the weather. Take out old, weak antifreeze now and put your trust in Prestone, too. More people trust Prestone than all other brands combined. We made it. More people trust Prestone. And when you flush your cooling system, trust Prestone Super Flush. Five guys and the girl who drove them wild followed them through three decades of loving and lying. First it was Rich Man, Poor Man, and now the world premiere of The Last Convertible, Monday. That is the Seattle Seahawk press box crew led by offensive coach Jerry Rome, the man on the right, talking with Jim Zorn. And he's talking to Jim Zorn down on the field. Here's what I want you to run next time, and they've been right almost every time. Dorning with a five-yard run moments ago for a second score in this first half. 66-yard drive, eight plays, and the Seahawks leading it 17 to three. And as a result, Red Miller puts Rick Upchurch back for the kickoff along with Chris Payne, a good boot. And Upchurch has to let it fly right by. Can't run those back. Rick Upchurch is not effective when you kick it out of the end zone. The Broncos normally do not like to use up church in kickoff situations unless it gets down to the situation where they are in desperation, perhaps late in the game. Not this early. That was not the uh, design because they want up church to remain healthy. And obviously, the more you're on the uh, kickoff unit, greater chance of injury. The defense has a goal each week for the Broncos to hold the opponents to 17 points or less. They're going to have to shut them out from here on out. Otis Armstrong is in the backfield now with Jim Jensen. Norris Weiss, the quarterback. Broncos trailing 17 to 3. And Weiss to throw on first down. He's got time. And now in trouble. Able to get it off. And it's a penalty marker is down. Two penalty markers go down. The intended receiver was Upchurch. And it was Dave Brown on the coverage. And roughing the passer against Seattle also. And this will be interesting. We had pass interference on Dave Brown and also roughing the passer. Watch Norris Weiss. He's on the scramble. He can't find a receiver open. The pressure is not that much. He breaks to the outside. Now he's going to try to hit Riley Odoms and then is snowed under. And there's Dave Brown. Against the defense. Defensive interference, number 22, rough in the passer, 58. Interference was a penalty taken, first down. The 
pass interference pre takes precedence. They will take first down at the point where Dave Brown interfered with tight end Riley Odom. Terry Beeson was uh, the man called on the penalty for Seattle, so it's a first down at the 37-yard line. Just under eight left in the first half. Marv Albert with Mike Hafner from Denver, Colorado. Lytle back in the backfield along with Jensen. Here's Weiss to throw. Overthrows Moses, nearly intercepted, but Webster could not hold on. Cornell Webster, the left cornerback, who has had an excellent start for the Seahawks over the first uh, four games, that time could not hold on. You want to talk about Norris Weiss not having the National Football League arm that it takes. And right there, he just let the ball slip out of his hands. Haven Moses was wide open, and he threw it over his head and almost had it picked off. Norris Weiss last week, 13 for 22, 215 yards, and ran for two scores. And overtime hit on four of four. Had a very solid game. Had a solid game against Seattle in his only start last season. Off the play action, Weiss throws sideline, and he completes to Odoms. First down and more. Riley Odoms, bumped out by Cornell Webster, the penalty marker thrown down. Again, Norris Weiss was hit after he threw the football. And I'll tell you, Carl Eller and Bill Gregory are not very happy about that call. Norris Weiss, a very active quarterback. That's his plus. Not one of your great throwers, but he can move around back there. He has Odom wide open. Now watch the late hit. You can see him go down. That'll cost him 15 on top of the game. Here's the call from the referee. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 75 defense, first down. Gene Barth says Robert Hartburn Hardy is called for the personal foul. It is our first down for the Broncos at the Seattle 31. And instead of Hardy giving the quarterback heartburn, he's giving his own coach heartburn with those bad penalties. Jack Dalvin out to the right now, and Haven Moses to the left side. John Keyworth has come on. He's in the backfield with Rob Lytle. This is Keyworth, and he's going to throw. He's got Dalvin wide open. And it's broken up. And Pedro Lopez down out of the pass of the Well, Red Miller pulling one out of the playbook. It was a floater thrown by Keyworth. Dalvin was all This is not face guarding. He was run into. Jack Dolben was run into before the ball got to his hand. First Keyworth, he knows he doesn't want to blow it. So he lobs it up, and it just hangs there for hours. I know how Jack Dolben feels. Please come down. Please come down. And Harris hits him before the ball gets there. A great call. Pass interference. The Broncos first and goal at the two-yard line. This capacity crowd now urging the Broncos on. They are trailing 17-3. This is Otis Armstrong, and he is it. A sea of orange here at Mile High Stadium as the seven-year pro out of Purdue, who has been a forgotten man this season, is able to turn the right side for the score. An important thing for the Broncos rushing offense is some speed outside. And the fans in this town have been screaming for Otis Armstrong because he has that outside speed. And you'll see he runs right away from Cornell Webster and Francis into the corner of the end zone with that extra speed. Waste to hold for Turner. Puts it right through to move the Broncos within seven. Seven and a half left, first half. And the Seattle Seahawks leave the Denver Broncos by the score of 17 to 10. Ram Power. Dodge gives you Ram Power. Now Dodge fans go beyond tough. They're Ram tough. Galvanized steel for critical area rust protection. More than Ford or Chevy. And with optional three-speed automatic, the best V8 mileage ratings. More than Ford or Chevy. Dodge vans. Engineered by Chrysler to go beyond top. Dodge trucks are Ram tough. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your engines. The same way 31 out of 35 of this year's Indy 500 drivers do in their everyday driving with Valvoline motor oil. 
because stop and go driving can punish your engine as much as 500 miles of speedway driving can punish an IndyCar's engine. And Valvoline can take the heat, protects your engine, helps make it last. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your engines with Valvoline. It's not just for winning races. On the misadventures of Sheriff Lobo, there's trouble brewing when Bertie spots some moonshiners. And look who's drinking the evidence, Dean Martin. Tuesday on NBC. Seattle head coach Jack Patera on the left and Denver's head man, Rhett Miller, on the right side. I think Jack is uh, thinking about those Seattle penalties. Five penalties have cost 89 yards. drive three plays for the Broncos with Armstrong taking it in 17 10 the score now and on the kickoff Al Hunter able to get by one would be tackler and Jim Ryan hauled him down right now we pause briefly for station identification this is the NBC television network this is KING TV Seattle Mike Hafner from Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. The Seahawks first down at their 20-yard line with 7.20 left in the second quarter. Bronco defense has got to show they can't give up yardage like they've done for this entire first half. New backfield, David Sims and Tony Benjamin in there for Seattle. Lodging on the reception, able to push his way across the 30. Ball was jarred loose out of bounds. Out of the 33, Foley and Jackson covering on the play. Obvi obviously, Jim Zorn and his offensive coach have discovered that the Broncos are weak against the pass on first down. Seems like every first down they go. Look at that Kansas City Oakland score. Oh. Kenny, Kenny Stabler sacked six times, 35 7. The Kansas City Chiefs walloping the Raiders, who are now one up and three down. First down at the 32 for Seattle. The short set and complete intended for Larger. Tommy under through Larger at the far side. It'll be a second and ten. Here's the announcement on the Kansas City Open score. Listen to the reaction. Yes, uh, they do appreciate that here in Denver. Oakland, not one of the well-liked football clubs around America. Our Seattle fans up in the greater Northwest don't like them either, especially after last week. Zorn thus far, 6-4-11, 79 yards. Second and 10. There's Benjamin with a hole. Benjamin to the 40-yard line. Making for a third and two. So Tony Benjamin and David Sims in the backfield for the first time this afternoon. Benjamin is a three-year man out of Duke, a sixth-round draft pick back in 77. As you look at Randy Gratishaw, of the Denver Broncos, and we're going to take a look at that uh, last play. Keep an eye on number 53. It's the sprint draw that Seattle runs so well, and they try to get the linebackers to go with Flo, and Gratishar, he didn't have anything to do with that play. Sherman Smith has come back for this third and two. That's Sims in motion. Smith for the first down, and more, and much more. Sherman Smith to the Denver 45, the free safety for our Jackson. Number 29, finally able to bring him down. And again, I can't say enough about this Seattle offensive line. They have really come together, and they are blocking Randy Gratishar, the best middle linebacker in the National Football League, according to the voters last year. And I think Gratishar had roller skates on that time. He had no chance to make the tackle. He was blocked perfectly. McCullum to the right, Lodgett left, first down for Seattle at the Denver 45. Seahawks lead it 17 to 10. And here is Zorn popping for large and incomplete. Took a good hit from Steve Foley, the right cornerback. Some of the Seahawks thought there should have been interference, but the officials say no. Again, we see that indication that Seattle wants to throw on first down against the Bronco defense. It'll be a second and ten as we get another look at the tail end of that play. <laughs> right. I don't know. It's a judgment call by the back judge, and he felt that Steve Foley was going for the ball, and it had gotten by Largent. I don't know, though. Steve thinks it's pass interference. I might go with him. Second and ten again. Benjamin and Sims are 
the running backs. Beautiful fake, but it gets nowhere with Grayson Manor. Able to make the uh, stop on David Sims. So Bryson Manor, who is up front with Reuben Carter and Barney Chavis, able to stop David Sims. It'll be a third and eight now at the 43. Big down for the Bronco defense. Obviously, Seattle would go to a multiple pass pattern. They've got three wide receivers in. Extra defender in for the Broncos. Charlie West has come on, joining Foley and Jackson and Thompson and Wright. Five minutes left, second quarter. Seattle up by seven. Zorn will throw, and he throws the middle. He's got Logic for the first down. Oh, is he elusive? Steve Logic picks it up, brought down by number 43, Steve Foley. Steve Largent has the best patterns and a pair of the best hands in all of professional football. He has good coverage from Steve Foley. It's a sharp pass, and look at the great hands. Tremendous concentration. And that's the way you beat the five backs with the underneath receiver. And a guy with that kind of hands is going to beat you every time. Got off to a slow start over the first two games, coming back from an ankle injury and dropped a couple. But he is right back. There he is, number 80, Steve Largent. First down at the 24-yard line as Largent gets a breather. Tony Benjamin, the ball carrier. Patera here in the second quarter. Providing some rest time for his starters today, Dan Dornick and Sherman Smith. David Sims making it back after sitting out last week with the neck bruise, and Tony Benjamin getting some action. Now Sherman Smith returns, replacing Benjamin. Benjamin carried only one time last year. Seven yard pickup against Chicago. That was it, activated uh, during the season after he failed the physical. Bad knee. Second and seven, down at the 21. And a throwing situation for Zorn. He's got Smith. Smith down at the 15-yard line. Randy Gratishar, the leading tackler on the Broncos, coming into today with 28 tackles and 18 assists. Able to stop that guy, Sherman Smith. Jim Zorn throws to his backs out of the backfield as well as any young quarterback. It'll be a third and one down at the 15. And here's another final score. Mike, the Redskins have uh, beaten the St. Louis Cardinals 17-7. Washington coming off the uh, walloping of the Giants on Monday night. 17-7 the final. Third and one for Zorn. And Sims with the first down. Big hole on the right side. Again, that Seattle offensive line is winning the battle every single time. And if you can run the ball in the National Football League and then open up Steve Largent, you've got a great offense. On that right side, Ron Coder at right guard, Steve August at right tackle. The center is John Yarno. The left side, Tom Lynch at the guard, and Nick Beebout making it back after suffering the back spasm sitting out last week. Beebout at tackle. First down for the Seahawks at the Denver 13-yard line. Here's Smith looking to follow his blocker, then he cut back inside for short yard. Bill Thompson, the strong safety, making the stop on the play. Tonight here on NBC, a sensational Sunday, starting 7 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time with a classic Disney film, The Love Bug, on Disney's Wonderful World. And then at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, it's Sunday's big event, Clint Eastwood, starring in the outlaw Josie Wells. We suggest you check your local listings for the correct times. That is all right here tonight on NBC, starting at 7. Two-minute warning has been provided. When we resume, it'll be a second and six for the Seahawks down at the nine-yard line. Following this two-minute warning, it'll be Seattle ball, a second and six, down at the Denver nine, with the Seahawks leading the Broncos 17 to 10. Thus far, Zorn is eight out of 14 for 104 yards. Largen has caught three for 73. And checking out the rushing statistics, Sherman Smith, 10 carries, 46 yards. He's right around his average. And Dan Dornick, who has scored the two Seattle touchdowns, 11 carries for 41 yards. So he's just under four per pop. Get that offensive line for the Seahawks all the credit. This is Smith straight ahead. Dive play tripped up by John Grant, number 63. Seven-year pro out of the University of 
Southern California. Still a four yard gain and the surge by that offensive line. The Broncos can't stop it. It's a third and two now down at the five. Again, the names of those offensive linemen, they deserve it here in the first half. Bebout, Lynch, Yano, Coter, and August. They are having themselves a ball game. Third and two at the five. David Sims with the bubble. Tom Jackson on the tackle. And uh, apparently the whistle had blown and Sims was able to hold on. So it is called no game. That was a big play for the Bronco defense. They'd given up all kinds of rushing yardage. And to get out of this with only a field goal instead of a touchdown might really help them. Watch that offensive line. This time the Broncos play it right. Tom Jackson slips inside of Sherman Smith's block. And that was the key play. That's a 22-yard field goal attempt by Herrera, who hit from 28 earlier. He's 5 for 7 on the season. And it is right through. So Herrera is 2 for 2 on the day with 38 seconds left. In the first half, the Seahawks now lead the Broncos by the score of 20 to 10. You've come to fly before the wind, harnessed to a wildcat, suspended above the waves like the man on the flying trapeze, straining to get every ounce out of her. And moving so fast, the mast begins to sing, leaving the rest of the world behind. So you go for it, making the most of now, from the life you live to the beer you drink. And since 1849, the beer that makes the most out of life is Schlitz. That's why every day, millions of times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz. When you're making it beer, make it just one beer. Schlitz makes it great. Go for it. Back deep for Denver, number 23 on the right. Chris Payne, a four-year man out of Chico State. And Rick Upchurch. They're the men up front just in case of the uh, onside possibility I'll by tell you, Jack, Herrera. Jack Patera does it at the strangest times. <laughs> we'll watch for it this time. 38 seconds left in this first half, and the Seahawks off two field goals by Efren Herrera and two touchdown runs by Dan Dorning. Leading the Broncos, 20 to 10. Armstrong took it in from two and a field goal by Turner. And that has been the scoring here thus far. He puts away. And let's see if Upchurch will have an opportunity. Yes, he's going to run it out to the 10. Good coverage by the Seahawks, and he's jarred back the other way. Excellent coverage by Seattle. And I thought the onside kick might have been a possibility because they didn't want to give Upchurch a chance to run it back. Rick Upchurch, one of the best return men in the National Football League. And when you're down by 10, you want that guy with his hands on the ball, but the perfect coverage by Seattle's Number Special 25, teams. Don Dufek, the first man to get to Upchurch, and it's a first and 10 from the 15. Now 33 seconds left in this first half. Quarterback Norris Weiss. With Lytle and Jensen in the backfield. And Weiss throwing on the run, and he completes to Odoms across the 40-yard line. Well, Riley Odoms has been his favorite receiver here in the first half. Autry Beeman able to bump him out of bounds. I think Norris Weiss and Riley Odoms had a little talk after last week's game against Atlanta. Odoms was shut out. So today, they've gotten back together. It is a first down at the 42-yard line. 27 seconds left in this first half. We'll see NFL 79 at halftime with all the scores, and I know there are a lot of people out there interested. Steve Watson, number 81, has uh, checked in at the wide receiver alignment. Three wide receivers in there right now, and this one is picked off. It is picked off by Keith Simpson. Who had just come on Simpson the second year man out of Memphis State 
intercepting Norris Weiss. And that will put an end to the Denver drive here in the second quarter with 14 seconds remaining in this first half. Again, a horrible throw by Norris Weiss right into coverage. He floats the ball. He has two receivers deep. Excellent play by Simpson, the first round draft choice. And I'll tell you, it wasn't so much that Simpson picked it off, but it was a horrible throw by Weiss, and you can't afford to do that in the two-minute drill. Now Seattle has position to score again before the half. That man right there might think, might be thinking he'll take a few snaps in the second half. Greg Morton. Weiss intercepted for the second time this season, and Zorn to go to the air on first down. He's got Sherman Smith just out of his reach. Just a bit too far. That was almost six right there. Sherman Smith wide open. Jim Zorn rushed the throw a bit. He had Smith wide open and couldn't hit it. Eight seconds left in this first half. Sherman Smith and the right side of that end zone was what inches away. <laughs> there wasn't anybody around him, that's for sure. Here are the Seahawks led to the line by center John Yarno, the three-year pro out of Idaho. Second and ten at the 24, and Zorn wants to talk it over. Seattle will talk it over with eight seconds remaining in this first half. On first down, Zorn firing for Smith, and we'll take another look at it right here. Jim Zorn caught the Broncos in a man-for-man -man defense on the backs. Sherman Smith eluded his linebacker, and look how wide open he is. Goodness. Bob Swenson, the closest defender for the Broncos, and about an inch and a half less, and he'd had six. Jim Zorn coming off his finest season as a pro, leading to a host of honors. A four-year man out of California Poly in Pomona. Threw for more yards, completed more passes than any other quarterback in the AFC last season. This year, 53%. He's thrown for four touchdowns. He has been intercepted six times, those six intercepts over the first two games of the year. Today, he's eight for 15 for 104 yards. And some of those interceptions in the first two games were dropped passes by his receivers. They were good throws, and they dropped them right into the hands of the defender. Let's see what Zorn does right here with eight seconds left. Moves Largent over to the right side. He has Ferguson wide left out of your picture. But he goes to David Sims. And a short pickup with a quick timeout call. Tom Jackson making the stop. Only three seconds elapsing on that play, so we have five seconds remaining, and Efren Herrera will come on to attempt the field goal. And Jerry Rome had come down from the press box and had discussed it with Zorn and with head coach Jack Patera. Do we go for the touchdown, or do we just run it up the middle, make sure we don't fumble, and then get the three points from Efren Herrera? And 23 to 10 makes it awful tough for Denver. I wouldn't want to be in that locker room at halftime. Oh. Herrera is six out of eight. He's two for two today, connecting from 28 and from 22 yards out just a moment ago. Zorn will hold. This will be a 39-yard attempt. He has hit from 34, from 46, and from 32. Going for his third this afternoon. Good block, Mark. The Broncos got a piece of it, and Herrera way off to the right and low, and that is it. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Seattle Seahawks 20, and the Denver Broncos 10. Some guys never learn. They're still taking it on the chin. Gotcha. Norelco offers the Norelco Rotary Razor. Not one or two blades, but 36 blades inside three adjustable floating heads and a unique shaving angle for a very close shave without a nick or cut. So say hello to the Norelco Rotary Razor and say goodbye to Gotcha. In this room, 
there are usually nine or ten infants playing, laughing, learning what it feels like to be loved. We can't show you their faces because they are victims of child abuse and neglect. I'm Archery Beeman of the Seattle Seahawks, and this is the Seattle Day Nursery, an agency supported by United Way. Here, they give love back to little children whose parents have agreed to seek help. In many cases, they were often abused or neglected themselves as children. No one knows how many abused children there are, but here in Seattle, there's a small ray of hope, thanks to a lot of volunteers who want to share the meaning of love. Thanks to them, thanks to you. It works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. We are at halftime, and Seattle leads Denver by the score of 20 to 10 in a surprise here at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Dan Dornick of Seattle with two touchdown runs, two field goals by Efren Herrera. He is two for three on the day, had one blocked just moments ago. Otis Armstrong scoring the Denver touchdown and Jim Turner with a field goal and that has been it. Right now let's go to NFL 79 with Brian Gumbel and Mike Adamley. At the half in Seattle 20, Denver 10. It's been a very big day of action. The Steelers remain unbeaten, but the Chargers lose. We've had two overtime games. The Lions have broken into the win column, and we've seen a fabulous day by a rookie in Buffalo named Jerry Butler. I'm Brian Gumble along with Mike Adam. We will get you all caught up right after these messages from your local station. It's our Silver Spectacular, on now through Saturday, September 29th at the Bond. Save 50% off sterling four-piece place settings in 38 of our most popular patterns from International, Gora, Toll, Lunt, Oneida, Wallace, Reed, and Barton. And with the purchase of four, eight, or 12 four-piece place settings, you'll receive one, two, or all three of these beautiful gifts. Right now through Saturday, save 50% off sterling four-piece place settings during our Silver Spectacular at the Bond. Okay, let's check the Mariner news. Tough game last night. Let's check the football headlines. Last night, hello, Mr. Sports, Babe Ruth, it wasn't? When it comes to sports, most radio stations give you a one-man show, but the KBI Sports page gives you a whole team who bring you the inside story on sports for two hours every weeknight. The KBI 570 Sports page, weeknights at 6, because we don't think one man can do it all. Hello, Mr. Sports. Better than checking gives you pay by phone at no extra charge. And only Washington Mutual has it. Hello, Washington Mutual. So, you can pay by phone or by pen. Either way, you earn interest on your spending money. It's another way we help families get more from their money. After all, family business is our business. Washington Mutual Savings Bank. Get better than checking and get pay by phone at no extra charge. This is King 5, Seattle. At halftime of the Seattle-Denver game, we welcome you back to NFL 79 headquarters in New York. I'm Brian Gumbel, along with Mike Adamley. We'll get you all caught up in the events of Sunday number four in this NFL season. Big game in Foxborough today. Match the unbeaten Chargers against the Patriots. Well, tonight, both teams are 3-1, and one, the result of a 27-21 victory on the part of the Patriots. But the Chargers had a chance to win this one. It was a great ball game between two teams, Mike, that averaged 30 points a game. No question about it. Another factor in the game was win. The Patriots had three possessions inside the Charger 42-yard line. That resulted in 20 quick first-half points. A big crowd, capacity crowd, turned out in Schaefer Stadium to watch these two teams battle. And Grogan and had a good day, as he has had lately. Here he finds Russ Francis across the middle, down to the one-yard line, set up the Pats for a score. It was 20 to nothing until Danny Fouts got his charges rolling. When he is in trouble, he goes to number 83, John Jefferson. Here he finds him to make it 20 to seven. Grogan made it 27-14 with this pass to Francis. The Chargers came right back. It's 27-21. The Chargers have a chance to win it, but Fouts is intercepted by Steve Nelson. Last year, he was an all-pro. He seals the victory for the New England Patriots. 
In Rich Stadium in Buffalo, you know, a Chuck Knox team usually isn't known for its offensive performance. But look at this score, 46-31 over the Jets. They had an outstanding performance from a man named Jerry Butler, just a rookie out of Clemson University. Nevertheless, he caught four touchdown passes. This was number one. And how about those stats? Ten receptions, 255 yards on the day. Here he got a little lucky. This second touchdown reception is deflected by the Jets. He picks it off, goes 75 yards for a score. Watch this one, though. Ferguson throws the ball short. Great concentration, and Butler turns it into a 74-yard scoring play. Bill's way out in front right now. The last touchdown came when Ferguson rolled to his right. Butler is racing across the middle. There he is in the end zone alone. Nine-yard touchdown run. You know, I think the people in Buffalo will start dialing up Canton, Ohio, the Hall of Fame number, because based on the performance today, a man should be enshrined. He's a great rookie, and this from a guy who has taken some knocks early on. He's landed on his head a couple of times. He goes up for it, though. Thank you, Mike. Detroit against Atlanta. The Lions busted in the win column for the first time. They moved to one and three. Falcons are at 500 after four weeks. 24-23, the final on that ball game. Jeff Comlow, 19 of 35, 289 yards and two scores. Monty Clark wins one without Gary Daniels. And it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Monty Clark, I think he's one of the best coaches in the league. And his quarterback, Jeff Comlow, is a rookie out of Delaware. He started the season as a third stringer, thrown into the fray. He's really shown some promise, and today he put a win on the board for the Lions. First touchdown came on this 15-yard pass to Freddie Scott, and then Comlo showed that he could throw the ball fairly deep when he hits David Hill, the great Lion tight end, over the middle. Hill on the day, three for six just part of the festivities, part of the action that uh, Comlo treated the Detroit fans to. Okay, good, buddy. I'll come right back at you in a second. Houston today, a winner over Cincinnati. Bengals now 0-4, but today they really came close, played a very good first half. Unfortunately, the Oilers got their stuff untracked in the second half. One at 30-27 in overtime. Tony Frisch winning field goal. Earl Campbell, 34 carries, 161 yards. Oilers actually played a little sloppy early because, as you noted, Dante Pastorini looked a little rusty. Well, he missed the last game and a half, and I thought Bum Phillips was going to start Gifford Nielsen. He should have. Uh, Dante threw two interceptions early on and got Cincinnati way out in front. They were ahead 21-0 at one point, 14-0 right here when uh, Jeff, the throwing Samoan, Jack Thompson, hit Archie Griffin over the middle. He went down to the one to set up a touchdown. It's 24-zip, as a matter of fact, when Pas Pastorini finally got himself together, 35 yards down the line in the end zone. Ken Burroughs catches his touchdown pass. It's 27-27 in overtime and watch this Minnesota Fat special. A mass A through the uprights. Houston wins a big one. Cincinnati now 0-4 under Homer Rice. I actually think Minnesota Fats has a better figure than Tony Frisch, but that's all right. Green Bay, Minnesota. <laughs> Vikings a winner in overtime today. 27-21. The Vikes go to the 500 level. Pat now 1-3. They've lost three straight. Baltimore against Pittsburgh. The Steelers came close today. Came close to being upset. But the Colts dropped to 0-4. The Steelers move to 4 0. If you're wondering why it was so close, consider this. The Steelers played without eight of their starters, and yet they still won. And Michael, that's a mark of a true champion. You know, it's funny. Usually the Steelers are a very, very well conditioned team, but they've uh, suffered a rash of untimely injuries injuries to Franco Harris and Terry Bradshaw. Of course, the Colts are playing without Burt Jones. There he is on the sideline with troubled coach Teddy Marchabrota. Bradshaw, as ever, he was ex excellent again today. Here he finds. John Stallworth in the end zone for the Steelers' first touchdown of the day. It made it 7-3. Greg Landry, Burt Jones' sub, found that he can throw the touchdown pass. Here he finds Roger Carr. Roger turns it into a touchdown, 10-7 in favor of Baltimore. The finishing touches, however, came on this tight end screen to number 89, another Clemson flash. Benny Cunningham, he scampers 26 yards into the end zone. Pittsburgh wins at 17-13. Steelers now 4-0. Okay, Michael. The Redskins move to 3-1, and one, the Cardinals to 1-3. and three. Final there, 17-7. Hart threw for 306 yards, but no touchdowns. Oakland against Kansas City, changing of the guard here. It used to be the Raiders walked all over them. No longer. The Young Chiefs took it to the Raiders, 35-7 final. Stabler sacked six times. And, Michael, you said at the beginning of the year, Chiefs are a bunch of up-and-comers. You bet. Uh, they have a lot of very good defensive team. No starters under five years in experience, and they proved it today, wiping out the Oakland Raiders before a capacity crowded Arrowhead Stadium. We talked about Clemson stars, Butler and Cunningham. Watch number four, quarterback Steve Fuller. Here he hits Steve Gaunty in the end zone to put the Chiefs on top, early 7-zip. And look at this man. He's probably the best punt returner in the league today. J.T. Smith out of North Texas State. Here he takes this gray guy punt 87 yards for a touchdown. You will recall that last week he returned another touchdown against the Oilers. Stabler, on the other hand, had problems. Here he is sacked by Whitney Paul, even though Van Egan recovers his own fumble, or Stabler's fumble. Stabler had problems in the air, too. 
He was intercepted by number 26, the Chiefs' fine safety all-pro Gary Barbaro. Barbaro, not great speed, but he turns this interception into a 72-yard punt return, just part of the reason why the Chiefs absolutely dominated the Raiders today, that final 35-7. Okay, Mike, all those scores are given you are finals. Let's bring you the partials now. Philadelphia out in front of the Giants, 14-6. That ball game at the half, Harold Carmichael has caught in 100 straight now. Seattle against Denver, as you're watching, Seattle out in front, 20-10. That ball game, of course, at the half. Chicago against Miami. The Dolphins still undefeated. They're out in front 10-6. Delvin Williams has the only touchdown. Tampa Bay continuing undefeated. They're out in front of the Rams 21-6. That game at the half. San Francisco ahead of the Saints by a point. That went two at the half. Let's go back to Denver and join Marv Albert and Mike Hefner. This 1979 National Football League game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. See the mileage makers at your Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth dealers. By Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Kmart Automotive Service Centers, where quality car products are Kmart priced. And by Allstate Insurance Companies. You're in good hands with Allstate. This bud's for everybody who puts in a hard day's work. This bud's for you, for all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This bud's for you. RCA wants you to see the right color. The color of Jupiter, captured by Voyager 1. Does your television automatically show you all the subtle, intense, and mysterious shades of a world never seen in this world before? If not, see Color Track 1980 by RCA. Color Track 1980, with eight automatic color systems designed to lock even subtle shades of color on track. RCA is making television better and better. At halftime, just moments away from the second half kickoff, and the Denver Broncos are trailing the Seattle Seahawks by the score of 20 to 10. I'm Marv Albert, along with Mike Hafter, and I would think that Red Miller, the Denver coach, had much to say to his defensive unit at halftime. The Denver Bronco defense was leading the National Football League against the rush, and I'm certain that Red Miller's red hair got a little redder at halftime, and also his face. He's got to have been upset. Mike, how do you explain the terrific play in the first half by that offensive line of the Seahawks. There are a few injuries on the Denver Broncos in the defensive line especially, but I'll tell you, you gotta give credit to the Seattle Seahawks front five. They've been blocking well and getting the first surge. And this had been a uh, much maligned offensive uh, line, although going into the season, the feeling was that uh, there was improvement, and we have seen that here today as we take a look at the halftime statistics. Seattle, 109 yards rushing. Denver had been giving up less than 100 during a game. Only 23 yards rushing for the Broncos, and on the other hand, the passing is dead even, and I believe if the Broncos would have thrown the ball more, they could have gotten more pass yardage. Coming into today, Denver with a record of 2-1 and one victories over Cincinnati. The overtime went over Atlanta last week. The loss to Los Angeles in that Thursday night game. Seattle at 1-2. and two. They were walloped by San Diego in the home opener. They lost at Miami 19-10. Last week convincingly beat Oakland 27-10 at the Kingdom. Prior to last week, turnovers had killed the Seahawks the last game and a half uh, they have really come together and as we enter the third quarter here in Denver they are leading by the score of 20 to 10 as Jim Turner tees up the football back deep awaiting this kickoff Al Hunter and Jeff Moore that's Hunter number 24 and Moore the rookie number 32 Moore out of Jackson State a 12th round selection in the draft underway now second half Hunter is chasing to the 5, 10, 15, out to the 20, and spun around and stacked up. Gang tackled over at the far side. A host of Broncos there, including Larry Evans, Charlie West, and the Seahawks will go to work. Very important defensive series for the Denver Broncos. They were pushed all over the field in the first half, and they've got to establish themselves right now. 
That Seahawk offensive line, Nick Bebout, Steve August at the tackles, Tom Lynch, Ron Coter at the guards. The center is John Yarno. And Around Yarno the leads him up. For those guys, they have played very well. And Tony and Trevor Smith working out of the eye. And the quarterback is Jim Zorn. And Zorn will throw on first down. And he completes to that man again, Largent, out of the 42-yard line. Again, the offensive game plan, and obviously for the Seahawks, throw on first down. And anytime you find number 80 to throw the football to, he's going to catch it. Zorn again on the play-action pass on first down. They figure they're going to hold the linebackers so they can open up that slot in between the defensive backs and the linebackers. And you will see right where Steve Largent is. In between the defensive backs and the linebackers makes another great catch. Bob Swenson made the stop. Largent came to the sidelines, limping and looking to walk it off right now. First down at the 42-yard line. This is Dorning with no running room at all. Hit back for a loss. I told you you can't run outside against the Denver Bronco defense. There was the perfect example. And I imagine Seattle will go back inside now. Swenson and Manner combining. On the stop, there they are, 51 is Swenson, 66 is Matter, the man who replaced Lyle Alzato at right defensive end. It's a second and 11 at the 41. Chavis, Carter, and Matter up front. Steve Largent being attended to by the Seattle trainer, looking at his leg. That won't help him any. Five defensive backs in there now for the Broncos on second and 11. Zorn with time incomplete. Radishar covering McCullum on the play. Prime example of why five defensive backs makes it so tough to throw. You can get double coverage from the linebackers on your short patterns, and that's where Zorn is most effective. And that time, Randy Gratishar and Bob Swenson both had the play covered. It'll be a third and 11. Jim Zorn, 9 for 17, 120 yards. He's not thrown a touchdown pass today. David Sims back in the Seattle lineup wearing number 35. Zorn to throw again. And he completes to Rabel for a first down. Steve Rabel shaking loose. And it's a first down out of the Denver 43-yard line. Again, that five defensive back set up for the Denver Broncos, and Rabel found the hole, the one slot where there was an open passing lane, and Jim Zorn can throw it like darts right on the butt. Rabel is a dependable receiver. Comes off a fine year, 22 catches, 316 yards. Played well in the early going. First down at the 43. Again out of the eye. Swing pass for Smith. Sherman Smith with acceleration to the 35-yard line. An eight-yard pickup, making for a second and two. Rizzo and Gretoshar, and on the tackle on Smith. And again, a perfect call by Jim Zorn. He had Tom Jackson blitzing, and the coverage for Smith was supposed to be Jackson, but he was blitzing. We've received word from the Seattle bench. They have taped up Largent's ankle, and there you see Steve trying to walk it off. He's been replaced by Steve Rabel. Rabel is out to the left. Now Ferguson, wide right, second and two at the Denver 35. Seahawks leading it, 20 to 10. Dorning, close to the first down marker as Chavis and Swenson combine to make the stop. And they are calling for the yardsticks. I'm trying to see whether it's short or not. I'm going to say it's short by an inch. All right, uh, Mike. Uh, see how, see how we'll check it out. <laughs> wide receiver's eyes work. And uh, we see Reuben Carter, number 68, limping around at the uh, Denver bench. Michael, I think those eyes, I hate to say it, but I think they have remained in fine shape. Listen, wide receivers always knew whether it was a first down or not. Uncanny. It is a third and inches at the 33-yard line. Kit Lathrop has come back on. Here's a check of the third down conversion situation. 
The next one for the Broncos will be their first. Seahawks have been successful. Watch that offensive line of Seattle. They're the key. Well, Sims looking to throw. And he gets away with it to the tight end, Pete's. Brian Pete's off the flip from Sims, who has done this successfully in the past. Little razzle-dazzle, Jackson and Foley combining. All right, he can smile now. Yes. Jack Patera pulling one off for a first down at the 15. He is smiling at the 15-yard line. The old flea flicker, pitch it back to Sims. He tucks it under his arm, pulls it down. And I'll tell you, if it would have been a little better throw, Pete's might have walked in the end zone. But Steve Foley, along with help from Tom Jackson, prevent the score. Sims and Smith can both throw the football. Smith was a quarterback in college. Time a uh, short pickup for Sherman Smith as uh, Grant and Swenson combined to make the tackle. That was actually the second pass attempt this season by Sims, incomplete on his first. And of course, last week we saw the uh, punter, Old Thunderfoot, Herman Weaver, uh, combine on a pass play to Cornell Webster that led to that uh, controversial touchdown, at least from the Oakland point of view. They were upset because Seahawks scored with uh, zero on the clock. Second eight now from the 13 yard line. Big play with Sims combining with the tight end Peets. And here's Zorn firing for the end zone. McCullum was in and then out and back in. And it's a score. The Bronco defense stayed home for this game. They've been torn apart by the Seattle offense. Jim Zorn's passing and the outstanding blocking of the front five of the Seahawks. Interesting to watch this play. It looked from our angle that he actually tried to twist away from Bernard Jackson as a result, stepped out of them back in. Let's see. Crossing pattern. There he is in the end zone. He'll be out again, but all you have to do is break the plane of the goal line, and it counts. And here is Herrera. Zorn putting it down, and it is right through. So the Seahawks now lead the Broncos by the score of 27 to 10. Testy crowd here at Mile High in Denver. To make way for the 80s, your Dodge dealer has to sell a lot of cars, trucks, and vans. And that's why Chrysler Corporation gave dealers the biggest cash incentives in Chrysler's history. Big discounts they can pass on to you. Come and see the low prices marked right on those cars, trucks, and vans. You'll get what may be the best deal you ever made. And only Chrysler Corporation tops your deal with a $400 check. Not Ford, not GM. Come to Dodge and check it out. If anybody appreciates the end of the day, it's a big A auto parts store. Because during the day, no other store works harder to give you quality parts and friendly service. Why only this morning? Okay, you need a muffler and a tailpipe? Brakes for a 67 Plymouth? We'll have it here by 11 o'clock. Yes, ma'am. I can show you how that goes on. You need six gas cans? Yes, we can grind drums. Is it a V8 or a 6? Quality parts, friendly service. That's Big A, the hard-working auto parts store. Laura's in love with Almanzo, but she has a rival. To make matters worse, Pa disapproves. Little House on the Prairie, Monday. A glum sea of orange here at Mile High Stadium with their Broncos trailing badly 27 to 10 with 10 minutes, 8 seconds left in the third quarter. Chris Payne on the right, Rick Upchurch on the left as Herrera gets set to kick off. 79-yard drive, nine plays for Seattle. 13-yard touchdown pass from Zorn to McCullum. Zorn's first TD of the day, his fifth on the season. It's time a short kick. Up church to the point. Out to the 30-yard line. The return by Up Church and the Broncos. Now first and ten from the 30. Sammy Green making the stop on up church. It'll be interesting to see what head coach Red Miller of the Broncos does with his offense. They're not used to playing catch up with this great defense. And now they're 17 points down and they've got to throw the ball. That puts a lot of pressure on Norris Weeks. Ball spotted at the 32. That is where up church's forward progress was marked. Up church comes out to the left side now. in motion and Weiss in trouble 
looking to get away, and he does, but Pedro Marcus thrown down. Weiss out to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, another flag is down. Three penalty markers down, and Weiss was able to run out of trouble. Two calls, a holding penalty on the Broncos and then a clipping penalty on wide receiver Haven Moses, so all that action by Norris Weiss will all come back. And there is that third penalty flag down as you look at referee Gene Barth trying to collect his thoughts and all the penalty markers. He's going to have to sort it out. He's got flags all over the field. But he's talking to Seattle. Again, Norris Weiss was under tremendous pressure, and we'll see. It looks like three or four people holding right there. There goes the penalty flag, so the holding we penalty was there. We three penalties against Denver. Illegal motion, holding, illegal use of the hands. <laughs> holding was a penalty taken. First down and 20. Well, take your pick. <laughs> All three against the Broncos. That is the hat trick. Illegal motion, illegal use of the hands, and holding. And it's the holding one that will be posted. So it'll be a first and 20 now, back at the 22-yard line. Broncos shift out of the eye as Lionel moves off to the left. Jack Dalvin is back at a wide receiver. He is out to the left. That's Odoms in motion. And Reese being pursued by Gregory incomplete. Intended for Jensen coming out of the backfield. Weiss had a couple receivers open, but the pressure was just too much, and he couldn't find them. Had to try and dump it off, and it was a poor throw, and they'll go to second and 20. Mike, do you think we will see Craig Morton perhaps next series? I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, they've got to throw the football to catch up. Weiss is not the pure passer that Morton is. Well, to this point, Morton has not begun warming up along the sidelines. We'll have to wait and see how Miller will play it. Broncos down 27 to 10. And the only way they can come back is to put it up in the air. Particularly right here, second and 20. And Weiss to throw. Gets it away, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Harris out of the 10 to the 5. The Seahawks will have first and goal. Second interception of the day by the Seattle Seahawks. Earlier, it was Keith Simpson. And now the three are pro out of Arizona State, John Harris. Not a smart throw by Norris Weiss. He was in the grasp of a defensive player. He just can't throw it up for grabs in the National Football League, and it was up there, and Harris picked it off. Again, the Broncos in a tough situation. They're down by 17. Seattle knows they have to throw it, and Weiss tried to jam it in to Haven Moses, and Harris stepped right in front, and it was an easy interception. John Harris, seventh-round draft pick last year. This is Harris's second year, named to most of the all-rookie teams a year ago. There's Greg Martin talking with quarterback coach Dave Perilli. And Red Miller looking on as the Seahawks have a first and goal down at the two-yard line. Here's Sherman Smith, and he's in. The Seahawks now lead it 33 to 10. And let me repeat these stats going into today. Denver's defense ranked number one in the NFL against the run. They had allowed only two touchdowns this year prior to today as you watch Smith bring it home. There was just nothing to do but run into the wide open spaces and we've got two quarterbacks down on the field at the Bronco bench warming up. Craig Morton and Craig Penrose will see a new quarterback. And Efren Herrera puts it right through. To get the Seahawks a 33 to 10 lead here in Denver as you look at Craig Morton. Get ready. Does the idea of buying a used car scare you? Get a 
great car buy at Hertz Buy a Car. We sell only the best cars from the Hertz Rent a Car fleet, and we give you the complete service and maintenance records so you know exactly what you're getting. Hertz Buy a Car. Call toll free for nearest location. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one-third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. Take it from a guy who works out a lot. Could really use one right now. There you go, Bruce. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Start your day with NFL 79, then AFC Player of the Year, Earl Campbell leads the Oilers against the Browns, followed by a great AFC West contest as the Broncos battle the Raiders next Sunday. NBC Sports, we're proud. There is the 15-year pro out of the University of California, Craig Morton, who we expect will come on on the next Denver series. Yes, he's getting ready to come on for Norris Weiss as Efren Herrera will kick off to the combination of Rick Upchurch and Chris Payne. The Seahawks now leading it 34 to 10. Again, a short boot, Chirp Upchurch to the 20-yard line, and the hit and down he goes across the 20. There he comes, Greg Morton. Mike Cronin bringing Upchurch down as Morton comes on. Last face, the Los Angeles Rams in that Thursday night defeat. That is only playing time this season. Taking over for Norris Weiss. Went five for 11, intercepted once, and his fumble led to the winning score by the LA Rams. You'll see a lot of pressure from that Seattle defense. They know Morton isn't very mobile. First down at the 22. As Morton calls off his first play. And pops it off to Upkirk. 25, 30. First down and more. Out near the 40-yard line. Excellent throw by Craig Morton. The great quickness. He has a powerful arm. And you want to get Rick Upchurch one on one in the open field. Watch the great quick release of Craig Morton. Even 15 years later, he can still throw the football. And Upchurch on the quick screen to the wide receiver almost breaks it. Harris slowed him down. And then it takes a tackle from Hartburn Hardy to stop him. 17 yard pickup. First down at the 39. And Morton to throw again. First down, Cornell Webster with the reps around Moses. So Craig Morton has come on and hit two of two. And I'll tell you, Craig Morton has that powerful arm. If it would have been Weiss, the ball wouldn't have got there quickly enough to make it a completion, but it's right on the button. Haven Moses with a good turn in pattern. And Craig Morton has got the got them fired up, though they're down by 24. Eight minutes left, third quarter. Denver with a long way to go. First down at the Seattle 41-yard line. And Morton to throw once again. Throws the middle and completes the game. First down down at the 20-yard line again. Morton with Moses. Keith Butler, outside linebacker on the right, making the stop. Is three for three, and he's brought that club upfield. Craig Morton can throw the football. I've, I played against him in college when he was at the University of California. He can still throw it 20 years later. And I don't know, there might be some unbelieving people about the starting quarterback next week. Morton can certainly throw. Lytle and Jensen are the running backs. Moses is off to the left right now. And the handoff to Jensen. Picked up a yard on the play. It'll be a second and nine at the 19. There you see Morton, three for three, 58 yards. Setting that Denver offensive line. Dave Studdard, Claudie Miner at the tackles. Tom Glassick and Paul Howard at the guards. The center is Bill Bryant. Five defensive backs now in for Seattle on second and nine. They know Morton's going to throw it. So does everybody else in the stadium. Up church right. And Moses right. Six and a half left. Third quarter. The short set. He's not up to. Up 
Jackson for the count. Works his way free inside the five. Julia Sissoko making the tackle, chasing Upchurch down. I said the Broncos want to get Rick Upchurch one on one. They saw deep coverage by Cornell Webster. Look at those moves by the quick Upchurch. And he's down to the two, and the Broncos are knocking on the door, and they've got time to make a run. And his first and goal. Down at the two. Morton has this crowd going once again. He has come out on fire and taking over for Norris Weiss here in the third quarter. Here's Lytle, bottled up, stopped at the line. Straight ahead move, and uh, Lytle was tripped up by Hartburn Hardy. Otis Armstrong now coming into the line, into the lineup, and he's that outside speed. Even if he doesn't carry it outside, the Seahawks will have to think about the outside run, and that would even open it up inside for fullback Jim Jensen. Armstrong thus far this year has carried only eight times for 27 yards. That includes the two-yard run outside earlier today. Now Morton on the bootleg, looking, and which one? Touchdown! Tackle eligible on that play. Dave Scudder, the off tackle was eligible. They set it up with the wide receivers so that the tackle was eligible. You know, he was covered all the way. I don't think they fooled the Seattle defense, but Morton found him with that great whip arm, and they got six. An unusual play, Cornell Webster trying to defend, giving away four inches to the left tackle, Dave Studdard, first-year pro out of Texas, who has just caught his first touchdown in the National Football League. The tackle eligible play, and here's Jim Carter coming through. So the Broncos wasting no time with Morton coming on. They get it up on the board. They are now trailing with 4.59 left third quarter. Still a long way to go. They're down 34 to 17. She's been from Maine to Malibu, but I don't let her go nowhere without the treatment. This is no car. This is a legend. And you better believe I give her the treatment. STP oil treatment. Since 1964, over half a billion cans have been sold. No other brand even comes close. So do what millions do. Give your car the treatment from STP. This sweetheart gets a treat. And this sweetheart gets the treatment. The Denver Broncos scoring drive 78 yards, seven plays within four minutes and 29 seconds. Craig Morton coming off the bench and firing bullets. Al Hunter driven back on the kickoff and says, I'll stay right here. They'll bring it out to the 20. And this crowd that was quieted earlier in third quarter has now come alive. 75,092, the 67th straight sellout during the regular season here in Denver. And they are rooting their Broncos out to overtake the Seattle Seahawks. Right here, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KING-TV, Seattle. and Bob Swenson is there to pick it off, and the orange madness is getting madness. And Mike, that's the first turnover this season that the Broncos have been able to come up with it. In game number four, as Swenson picked it off, Morton, who is five for five for 77 yards, running the Broncos right here, gets the play. 
Myers, right side, completes the up kick. Oh, they say out of bounds. And the Broncos argue, that's Rob Lytle over, arguing the call. You must get both feet down inside the line. Rick Upchurch running the corner pattern. Morton is right on the button again. The guy is hotter than a firecracker. One foot, uh-oh. It sure looked to me that he was in. Of course, the referee and the back judge has a better angle than we do. Might not have had control of the football. And I wouldn't put on one of those striped shirts and hang a whistle around my neck, so I'll let them call it. Second and 10 at the 24. And now the handle. Here's Benson. Good call. Excellent call by Craig Morton. It takes some pressure off of him when he can get the running game going also. He'd thrown almost every down, Marv. Jim Jensen has great speed for a 240-pound fullback. About 4-6 in the 40, and he really keeps the drive going with a great call, the running play. Justin and Brown making the tackle. Denver trailing 34-17 off the intercept by Swenson looking for another six right here. Morton is five for six now. And he throws for Moses. Touchdown! Even Moses. And the Broncos are right back in it. The old pro Craig Morton on a time pattern. They want to throw it before the cornerback turns around. Cornell Webster never had a chance. A perfect throw again, Marv. He's been on the button with every single throw. It is now Broncos trailing 34-23, and Turner will try to cut it down to 10. And he does. We have three minutes and 48 seconds left in the third quarter. This game has turned around off a passing clinic that is being engineered by Craig Morton will be back in a moment. You dance on a river of wood, and the spinning shapes in the cold, dark water are your only bridge home. So you keep on dancing until the last log is in place and you can head for Miller time. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, we've got the beer. Miller beer. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller beer. Casey's Bar Club, buy some and get one free sales on right now. Participating outlets where you see this poster. Thanks, AC. Americans are learning that if their car's plugs are misfiring, a tune-up with new AC spark plugs can help improve gas mileage. Thanks, AC. Now's the time to tune up because AC Delco is making it possible for you to get eight AC spark plugs for the price of seven. Thanks, AC. Tune up with AC. Buy seven. Yeah, we three. Thanks, AC. Craig Morton, a man who has had his ups and his downs in his career with the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Giants, and with the Denver Broncos, but today way up, coming on for Norris Weiss and leading the Broncos to two quick touchdowns, the second off the intercept by Swenson, and the Broncos trailing at halftime, 20 to 10, outcrowd 34-24, as Hunter is sent all the way back, and that's uh, just where he will stay. Tremendous vote by Jim Turner, and it's been all Denver here. Following the early moments of the third quarter, when the Seahawks were able to move in front by the score of 34 to 10. There's that last drive, three plays, 24 yards, capped off on the 24-yard pass play to Haven Moses. And the Bronco defense has now got to have some inspiration as Greg Morton has brought him back. We'll see if the Bronco defense can hold up. Last time that zone looked to throw, he was picked off for the seventh time this season. Dunn and Smith, the running backs. This is Sherman Smith looking to go wide. Come on. Smith 
could not make the turn. Pursued over to the left side. Radishar and Grant combining on the stop. And I'm very, very surprised that Seattle is trying to run outside. If there was one thing they couldn't do all today was run outside. Look at Randy Gratishar with help from Bryson Manor and Bob Swenson. John Grant also in there. Oh, momentum has certainly turned around. Well, those defensive statistics that you just saw on the screen will certainly uh, be affected by next week's uh, weekly sheet that is released by the NFL. Second down play. And Zorn to throw. Looking for Ferguson. Tipped away. Oh, a beautiful play by Swenson. I'll tell you, the Bronco defense is fired up. He had Ferguson wide open on the out pattern against Bill Thompson. And Swenson was in the passing lane, and I haven't seen him get off the ground like that this season. Great play by Swenson to knock down a sure completion and a first down. And it'll be a third and 12 at the 18. Bob Swenson, one of the many first-rate free agents signed by the Denver Broncos. Third down, 18, and Mile High Stadium is shaking. Fans stamping their feet. We can hardly hear ourselves talk. Here's on. Overthrows intended for Weibel. And Seattle forced to give it back to Denver. They're fired up, those guys in the orange jerseys, making it awful tough on Seattle. And if Morton remains as hot, Seattle's going to be in for a big, long fourth quarter. Alan Weaver, 10-year pro out of Tennessee, leads the National Football League and net punting yardage, coming off a great day, having himself another fine day. Up Church is back in single safety, and a bad boot, straight up. Denver will have tremendous field position. Herman Weaver got the apple and shake one off of his foot. You can't give that momentum. Keep giving it to him to the Broncos. Herman Weaver knows he needs a big booming punt. He doesn't get it. He tried to rush it a bit and it shanked off the side of his foot, went straight up in the air, and the Broncos will start at their own 34. Mike, that goes down as a 17 yard punt by Weaver, who has been booming up at 40 and 45 a clip. First down for Denver at the 35 yard line. Double pump, he whips one down, touchdown, Upchurch! A spectacular catch by Upchurch, but a penalty mark goes down. There is a flag on the play. We'll see who it's against. I think it's against Seattle. It is. Yes, it counts. for the extra point. Denver moves within three as Morton has come on within a short time has thrown three touchdown passes to the tackle started to Moses and now to up to 225 left third quarter and Seattle leading at 34 to 31. Jack Patera trying to figure out how to put a stop to this Bronco drive. It has been all Denver following those early third quarter scores by Seattle, and it has completely turned around. The deep man Moore and Hunter, Hunter number 24, 
And more number 32. Greg Morton coming on for Norris Reese here in the third. He had played only against the Los Angeles Rams in that Thursday night game a couple of weeks back was 5 for 11. And it was Morton's fumble that led to the winning score by the Rams. Here's Turner. And another boomer. Al Hunter decides to run it out to the 10. Out at the 17. So Hunter, for a moment, it appeared as if he would stay in the end zone and changed his mind. He ran it out. Larry Canada, backup running back. There he is, number 35, two-year man out of Wisconsin. Able to get Hunter. And Jim Zorn will go to work once again. Tremendous pressure now on the Seattle offense. They've got to get a first down at least to break this momentum that Greg Morton has created for the Denver Broncos. Last three series, Zorn has been stifled early. First down at the 16-yard line. Warning in front of Smith out of the eye. And Zorn in trouble. Down he goes. Get the quick whistle as Jackson was all over. Zorn was looking to knock the ball loose. The Bronco defense has been inspired by the play of Greg Morton. They were terrible in the first half. In the second half, when Morton came in, they've gone insane. And now, Seattle in a deep hole. And again, the Broncos have a shot. It'll be second and long. Back at the five-yard line. First sack of the day for the Bronco defense. Second and 19. Less than two minutes left. Third quarter. It has been a Bronco for run here in the third. Sherman Smith picks up some running room getting across the 10 yard line. Jackson and Grant Manner in on the stop. Jack Patera on the sideline wondering what happened to his 24 point lead. Seahawks now have a third and 12 at the 12. Huge lead has evaporated. They now lead by three, 34 31 off the three consecutive touchdown passes thrown by Craig Martin. Song throwing right, got Dorning out of the 15 foot stop. That's it. Lewis Wright, the left cornerback, five year man out of San Jose State, one of the premier cornerbacks in the National Football League, ending that Seattle drive. Herman Weaver, who shanked the 17-yarder that led to the third Morton touchdown, will punt once again to Rick Upchurch. Do you think there's some pressure on Herman Weaver? I'm sure that that shank putt is going through his head. Looks like Bryson Manor shaken up on that last play. Manor has been just solid taking over for Lyle Alzado. also there to check it out. And Manor gets a hand as he uh, heads to the bench. A reminder, NBC Sports will cover the fifth week of the 1979 NFL season with a national doubleheader lineup next week starting 12.30 Eastern time with NFL 79. Starting the day with a look at ex-New England coach Chuck Fairbanks, who is now coaching at Colorado. Mike Gumbel and Mike Animal hosting starting 12.30 next Sunday. This time, Weaver able to get a good one off. Up church to the quarter. Going wide, 45. Midfield, look at him, lead him. Twist and turn down to the four. Harvey should have been tackled at least four or five times. The little guy is so hard to catch up to. He's also learned how to catch a pass on the end of Craig Morton's aerials. Watch these moves. Outstanding individual job by Rick Upchurch. He has a sixth sense about where the holes are. He breaks one tackle there. He's going to break three or four more, and the little water bug is really hard to pull down. Gives Denver tremendous field position again, and they're only within three.
Morton has come on at wide receiver, but this time Morton goes to the ground, and it's a short pickup. Jim Jensen picking up a couple. Moments ago, we were see where the Jack Dalvin hurt his ankle, so he is sitting down and has been replaced by Steve Watson. Now Jensen replaced by Keyword as this third quarter has come to a close. And a hand for the Denver Broncos. When we resume, it'll be second and nine from the 39 in the fourth quarter. The Charles Levitans just got a Dodge Aspen and a $400 check from Chrysler Corporation. We shopped all over. The deal we got was excellent. Aspen's a nice sized car. With good gas mileage. And the check from Chrysler clinched it. Now's the time to deal. Chrysler Corporation's giving dealers big cash incentives they can pass on to you. Only Chrysler tops your deal with a $400 check. Not Ford, not GM. Come to Dodge. Check it out. Super Automotive Values from Sears. Steering through the snow or rolling through the rain. Sears all-season steel-belted radio, the weather handler can handle it. Now on sale, as low as $29.88 each. Now get the Sears heavy-duty shock, just $9.99 each installed. Smooth out some of the jolts, jars, and jerks with America's best-selling shock, installed only $9.99. At Sears, where America shops for value. Those magnificent men and their flying machines. Let's take her up. Got you, Dad. Some guys just can't get enough of flying, even when they fly for a living. Call them dedicated, call them perfectionists. In the friendly skies, we call them Captain. Those magnificent men and their flying machines, they go only up, up into the friendly skies. The race for the 1980 Olympics has already begun. The games in Moscow are just the last lap of a long, grueling race that's going on right now. We've got the talent, but we need your support because America doesn't send athletes to the Olympics. Americans do. Don't let our team get caught short. Send a contribution to U.S. Olympic Committee Box 1980C, Cathedral Station, Boston. For contributions of $25 or more, you'll receive this gold-plated medallion. This message sponsored by the U.S. Olympic Committee and NBC. We welcome you back to Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. This is Marv Albert with Mike Hafner. Fourth quarter underway. Second and nine from the 39. Greg Morton throwing three touchdown passes within two minutes and 34 seconds to bring the Broncos right back. Here's Morton. Gonna get it away to Keyword. John Keyword with the first down plus additional yardage. And Craig Morton, who is said to not be able to move, scrambled out of the way, found his third receiver, and a great effort by Keyworth. Joey Sosopo bringing Keyworth down. There's Norris Weiss, who was replaced by Morton early in the third quarter. And Morton is now eight for nine. Has this ball club completely fired up? The Denver defensive unit turning around. First and ten. 27. Moses slot right, up church, flat right. Armstrong spinning through. Oh, uh, Otis Armstrong, who has seen some action here this afternoon. As Morton looks to mix things up, came out throwing as he was trailing 34 to 10. Denver down 20 to 10 at the half in that early third quarter. Now by 24 points. And Greg Morton might be questioned for his running plays, but at this point, but he's got to keep the pressure off of himself. Seahawks know he's throwing well. A couple of running plays will keep the defense off balance. Second and six from the Seattle 23. Looking right side and complete. Riley Odom, diving catch. Able to get back up because he went down by himself. And it is another Denver first down. Cornell Webster and Michael Jackson finally able to cover up. Craig Morton getting excellent protection. He's had time to look over the field. Riley Odoms had come in motion. And Morton waited for him to clear. And again, he's going to 
to get a shot in the back, but Odoms goes down on his own. Nobody touches him, and he gets back up and gains another five yards, and Morton is still hot. He is now nine for ten. He has a first and goal at the eight-yard line. Upchurch to the right, Moses slot right. Lytle and Jensen are the setbacks. This is Lytle. Inside the five. Tripped up by Julian Sissoko. It'll be a second and goal now. That ball is placed down at the one-yard line as Julian Sissoko and Hardy combine. Good blocks by Glassick and the running back, Jensen. And the Seattle defense had been so good for two and a half quarters, and now they've fallen apart. There's a couple missed tackles. Rob Lytle finds the hole inside. Outstanding lead block by Tom Glassick, and Lytle has got him down to the one. Now Red Miller has Armstrong and Keyword in the backfield from the one-yard line. Here's Armstrong. And he is short of the goal line. Looks like a fumble. And it will be depend when that whistle blew the Seahawks are claiming that they made the recovery but no they did not third down play the officials indicate third down play upcoming here's another look Otis Armstrong off tackle on the lead block by John Keyworth and he did in fact fumble there's the ball loose and evidently a Bronco came up with it and it could have gone either way then and it's now third and goal from the one. Apparently Ron Egloff, the backup tight end, was able to cover up. Now Lytle and Jensen, the running backs. Here's Lytle. Michelob makes a light beer? Perfect. The good taste of Michelob light. Don't just compare it to other light beers. Compare it to your regular beer. It's that good. You always did go first class. Your ticket to San Francisco. Thank you. San Francisco? You too? Good taste <laughs> runs in the family. Yeah. I got my start playing golf, driving a tractor. Arnold Palmer, back home in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. My father was pro here, but before he taught me to play golf, he taught me to treat the equipment right. So, we used Pennzoil. And I think that old tractor of ours lasted 30 years or more. Look, if Pennzoil and I hadn't taken good care of the equipment, I might have never gotten on the golf course. Pennzoil, America's ask for motor oil. Next Saturday, PBA Bowler of the Year, Mark Roth, gets things rolling on the premiere of Sports World's Bowling Miniseries. Then the action is fast and furious in the Michigan 125 on Sports World. NBC Sports, we're proud. The Broncos take the lead on a score by Rob Lytle. Excellent blocking by Paul Howard and number 71, Claudie Miner. You see Howard's kick out block to give Lytle the one inch he needs to get in the end zone and the lead for the first time today for the Broncos. Seven plays, 40 yards. 27 straight points put on the board now by Denver. They were down 34 to 10 early third quarter. This is Moore on the return for Seattle to the 15. And run out 
He's out of bounds. Right across the 20 yard line. Run out by backup defensive end Bruce Radford. Well, that snap and the mix up as Norris Weiss try to place it down for Jim Turner could be very costly. Looks like a good snap to Norris Weiss. He just couldn't set it up for Jim Turner. And that means only a three point lead and a bit of incentive for the Seattle offense. 11 07 left, fourth quarter. And the Seahawks, who have been very quiet offensively since they scored early third quarter, go to work right here. First and ten at the 20 yard line. Dorney and Smith, the running backs, the quarterback is Zorn. And he looks to throw on first down. He pops it out, but it's under throw. The intended receiver, Sam McCullum, who was not looking that way, he did not expect Zorn to unleash that quickly. Again, tremendous pressure by the outside linebacker Tom Jackson on Jim Zorn, and Zorn had to throw the football before he, he wanted to, and that meant that his receiver wasn't looking for the pass. That'll be a second down at the 20-yard line. Bebout, Lynch, Yano, Coder, August up front. For the Seahawks, very effective in the first half. Largent apparently is all right. He's to the right, and Ferguson is now to the left side. Largent peeling off, and Zorn to the air again, through the hands of Ferguson. It was covered by Bernard Jackson. And again, great pressure as the Broncos blitz the linebacker, this time Randy Gratishar. And again, Jim Zorn had to throw the football before he wanted to. Didn't give his time for his receivers to clear. It is a third down and 20. A concern, Seattle head coach Jack Patera. Next Sunday, Seattle will be home for Kansas City, and the Chiefs look to be improved. Easy victory over Oakland today. Following week, Seahawks will be at San Francisco, then back home for San Diego. Next Sunday, Denver will be at Oakland. And then back home for the Chargers. Third down, 10. Zorn with time. He's got it away. Intended for Sherman Smith. And again, the Seahawks are stopped. Herman Weaver coming back on. To put away to Rick Upchurch. And I'll tell you, I don't think Seattle wants to give the ball back up to Craig Morton. Morton's been so hot. Here again, a pressure situation for Herman Weaver. Denver going with three deep men, but Upchurch the man in the middle. Weaver booting from his 11. Upchurch. 35. Goes wide at the 40 and fumbles, but fumbles out of bounds. It'll be Denver ball now. Inside the 40 off the 49-yard punt by Herman Weaver. Honey, is this homeowner's insurance high? I don't know. Think it's too much? How would I know? Compare with Allstate. Compare? compare? Bring in your policy and compare rates. If you have a good deal, we'll tell you. But for many, chances are we've got a better deal. We've got a better deal. Allstate might save you some money. But you'll never know until you bring in your policy and compare. Oh, that's a good deal. <laughs> when you want to save on homeowner's insurance, yeah. <laughs> Allstate wants to help. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. Denver coach Red Miller is saying to Craig Morton, listen, Craig, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Just keep doing it because he's perfect already. First down at the Denver 37. Broncos down 37-34. They have scored 27 consecutive points. Handoff for Jensen. Penalty markers are down as Jensen is tripped up by Keith Simpson. Right cornerback, but there are flags down. Riley Odoms was in motion that time and started toward the line before the snap, and they caught him. The Seahawks severely hit by penalties. And the third quarter, and now here's one on Denver. The illegal motion offense, number 88, refused, second down. As Mike said, Riley Odoms called for the motion. It is refused. So a second and nine for the Broncos at the 38-yard line. Broncos will put the ball up. 
and the Seahawks must stop this pass. They've got to cool off Morton real quick. Up Kirk is out to the left. And Moses to the right. The deep back is Keyword. David Moses not able to hold on. Juggling act by Moses. And fortunately, from the Denver point of view, that was not picked off. Michael Jackson with the hit on Moses setting up a third and nine for the Broncos at their 38. Now really a crucial passing situation for Denver and Morton obviously has come through every time in the game in the crucial spot. Good confrontation here Mark. Steve Watson the rookie out of Temple out to the left side and up church right Morton is now 9 for 11 149 yards and three touchdowns. Throws the middle and completes it. Riley Odom's first down. He stepped out at the 40. And Morton has done just that. He has come through. Greg Morton's stock has gone up. Holy mackerel. He's uncanny today. He is now 10 for 12. And a first down at the Seattle 40-yard line. On NBC tonight, a sensational Sunday starting at 7 Eastern time with a classic Disney film, The Love Bug, on Disney's Wonderful World. And then at 9 o'clock Eastern time at Sunday's big event, Clint Eastwood and the outlaw Josie Wells. Check local listings for times in your own. All right here on NBC. Morton able to unload to Upchurch. And Upchurch struck down inside the 35-yard line. Cornell Webster, the left cornerback. Making the tackle. And again, that same type of pass where you get one-on-one -on -one coverage on the very elusive Rick Upchurch. Morton hit him perfectly. And he picked up seven, second and three. Upchurch looks a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> Those wide receivers all got to have their tongues hanging out because Morton's been wild. Double duty for Upchurch, though, today, seeing much action. Field. On a kickoff return. The official clock is not running. The official clock apparently is not running. The scoreboard shows 10 minutes and 48 seconds. 10.48 according to the scoreboard remaining in this fourth quarter. They'll keep the official clock on the field, and it's always kept that way. They're going to reset the clock, Marv, and we'll find out exactly how much time left in this fourth quarter. I'm sure the Seahawks are interested, and so are the Broncos. They are attempting to reset the scoreboard clock. Right now, they've pushed it back to 15 minutes. And now, they say play back in, so I would think they will pass it on on the uh, public address. Final score, Miami Dolphins defeating the Chicago Bears 31 to 16. Miami now 4-0, Chicago at the 500 mark at 2-2. Uh, two two. Harry Justin has come on, replacing Cornell Webster at left quarterback in the second and three for the Broncos. Morton off the play action, going deep. Oh, just knocked away. Haven Moses, the intended receiver, that was broken up. Keith Simpson, number 42, who was able to intercept a Norris Weiss pass earlier in the game, able to get his hand on that toss. Keith Simpson uh, just got a hand on it, deflected the ball just a bit. Otherwise, Haven Moses would have been in the end zone for a touchdown. Watch the play by Simpson, 42, deflects the ball right there just enough so that Haven Moses doesn't get a chance for six. Great play by Simpson, a first-round draft choice. It is a third and three. Moses has caught three, Odom's five, and up to five as you watch Otis Armstrong pick up the first down. So Craig Morton going to the ground, and he's picked up an important first down. Again, we don't know how much time is left because it's being kept on the field, but that first down was very important for Denver to keep their momentum going. It's a first down at the Seattle 29-yard line. Greg Morton spent 10 years in Dallas, three years with the New York Giants that he would like to forget about. 
the two years here at Denver, won two AFC Western titles, plus the Super Bowl berth, unofficially, nine and a half left fourth quarter, on the draw, straight ahead, Tom Keyword, picking up yardage. And with Craig Morton so hot in the passing game, the running game for the Broncos has opened up, and Craig Morton using it perfectly. Robert Hardy, Michael Jackson, Combining on the stop, but a penalty marker is down and looks to be a procedure call. It was a six yard pickup by Keyword. Illegal procedure against Denver, five yards will be first and 15, Marv. Illegal formation offense. The tackle was uncovered, first and 15. It'll be a first and 15 back at the 34-yard line off the illegal formation. The that tackle so uncovered means that he was off the line of scrimmage more than his normal allotted amount. How's that for an explanation? <laughs> Say that again, run that right by. Here's Morton in difficulty, and down he goes. Craig Morton is sacked. Back near midfield, Julia Sissopo, the six foot three, 252 pound rookie out of UCLA, a number one draft pick by the Seattle Seahawks, getting to the quarterback, Craig Morton. Not the fault of the offensive line this time. Craig Morton couldn't find a receiver open, did the wise thing. He only has a three point lead, had to scramble, still can't see a receiver open, and instead of throwing it up for an interception as Weiss had done in the first half, he just had to eat it. It'll be a second and 27. Up church to the back. Moses Wright. Can he, get out, can he get out of the hole? <laughs> and a timeout is called now by Denver. So Morton to the sidelines to talk things over with the second and 27 upcoming. Natural light beer, please. Actually, I guess you're supposed to say, give me a natural or make it a natural. Okay, so I'm a maverick. But you know, I just walked out of a bar because they didn't have natural light beer. You must have been humidified. So was I. I emphasize with you. You know, a cabin without the smooth, clean taste of this light beer is downright unnatural. You know, that's so true. That's why I came in here for a natural. There you go. I just said natural. It goes to show you. I guess you hear something so often. You naturally just follow along like a flock of sheep. Monkey see, monkey do. On the misadventures of Sheriff Lobo, there's trouble brewing when Bertie spots some moonshiners. And look who's drinking the evidence. Dean Martin. Tuesday on NBC. Apparently, they have readjusted the clock. You see 8.32 left fourth quarter, and that is correct. This is Marv Albert with Mike Hafner from Denver, Colorado. Led by Craig Morton, the Denver Broncos were down at halftime 20 to 10, down early third quarter 34 to 10, reeled off 27 consecutive points, and now lead it 37 34, but they have a second and 27 at the Seattle 46. This is Keyworth on the slant left to the 41 yard line, and it will be third and long upcoming. Smart call in that situation. You do not want to change the momentum by throwing an interception. That was a conservative play as far as the fans are concerned, but maybe a smart play in winning this football game for the Broncos. Third and 22 at the Seattle 41. Now Watson to the left and Moses in a slot left. Here's Upchurch to the right. Jensen is the lone deep back. And Morton to throw. And in trouble, gets it away for Upchurch. Broken up. A foot race for that Morton throw. And Upchurch had it battled away by a couple Seattle defenders. Tried to take advantage of the great speed of Rick Upchurch. Greg Morton knew he wasn't open early. You'll see him pull the ball down, then get it back up. And it's more of a hope pass. Hopes he throws it up and hits the right jersey. And I think Rick Upchurch played defensive back more than offensive receiver on that play. And here is the rookie out of battle, Luke Prestridge. He will try a directional punt. That has been the only rep against him. Still, 
not able to successfully uh, direct in these short yarded situations. And uh, as we see right there, as Jeff Moore takes, but good coverage by that with a pin and back. That time, Prestridge got a break because it was a tough one to handle. Chris Payne in on the tackle of Moore, and a timeout has been called with seven and a half left in the fourth quarter with the score of the Broncos 37 and the Seahawks 34. Take care of your car at Kmart. Your Kmart Automotive Center has the answer to your muffler problem. The zinc-coated, double-wrapped Kmart Arrestor muffler. Have it installed by Kmart, and if anything goes wrong, they'll replace it free as long as you own your American-made car. The Arrestor. Zinc-coated and double-wrapped like the best. And best of all, Kmart price. Get it at Kmart Automotive Centers across the USA, where quality auto products are Kmart priced. Now, the best zenith ever. System 3 is even better. Even better. The sharpest zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. An all modular chassis designed to be the most reliable zenith ever. Most reliable. And now, Computer Space Command Remote Control. 105 channels. Zenith's most advanced. Most advanced. Zenith System 3. System 3. Now, even better. Five thousand plus here in Denver. Sixty-seven straight sellout crowd during the regular season. Seven and a half left fourth quarter, and it's a first and ten at the eight for Jim Zorn and the Seahawks. This is Dorning straight ahead once again as Swenson was able to make the tackle. Dan Dorning picking up the first down. Dornick, a great play to give Jim Zorn some field position so that he can work offensively. This game is not over yet. Throw some scores at you. New Orleans leading San Francisco, 30 to 21 in the fourth. Both those clubs are 0 and 3. Tampa Bay leading the LA Rams, 21 to 6 in the second. And the Eagles over the Giants, 17-13 in the fourth quarter. I don't want to tell you I picked Tampa Bay. <laughs> Completed to Dornick. Out of the 30, it's another first down for the Seahawks. Bernard Jackson, the free safety, stopping Dornick. And that's the first sustained drive the Seahawks have had since early third quarter. And again, that missed extra point could prove to be a factor late in the game. Jim Zorn throws to his backs well. He did it well in the first half. Now he's going back to it. He finds Dornick underneath the coverage and gets another first down. And for crowd urging. Go defensive unit on. Sherman Smith off the starter step. 45, 50. Beautiful move by Smith off the huge hole that was set up. Again, that sprint draw by the Seattle Seahawks. They run it so well. It's their bread and butter play. Zorn sprints out as though he's going to throw. Hands off to Smith and watch him. The Sherman tank goes right through the hole that was opened up. Bryson Manor misses the tackle, and Smith has given the Seattle offense some field position. Thompson and Jackson brought him down. First down for the Seahawks at the Denver 47. And Zorn to unleash deep downfield, and it's picked up. Steve Foley on the intercept intended for Steve Logan. And the Broncos with another turnover. for the eighth time this season and second time this afternoon. Steve Largent had his man beat Steve Foley, number 43. You can see Zorn. He looks at him all the way. That's where he's going. It looked like the ball slipped in his hand a bit because it was underthrown. And there was the interception that might have turned this game in favor of Denver. For Foley, his first interception of the season. Broncos take over first down at their 13 yard line. Moses to the right, but the handoff for Jensen tries the left side and gets a couple out of the play. Jim Jensen, three year pro out of Iowa, second round draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys back in 76. Missed the entire 1978 season because of a knee injury. Made it back big here in 79. A surprising speed. 
for a big man. And the Seahawks defense has got to stop Denver on this drive, and they've got to stop them quickly. Second and eight at the 15. 4.55 remaining, fourth quarter, and the Broncos lead it 37 to 34. Upstart and Keyworth now at the running back. Morton on the bootleg, but did not fool Seattle's Bill Gregory. Bill Gregory has been the most consistent defensive end for the Seattle Seahawks this season, and Craig Morton doesn't run the bootleg very often, and it usually fools the defense. But Gregory stayed at home, and he's got a piece of Morton's jersey, and Morton's going nowhere. That sets up a third and 13 back at the 10-yard line. Bill Gregory, a nine-year man out of Wisconsin, another one-time Dallas Cowboy. Steve Watson has come on. Three wide receivers in for the Broncos, and this third and long. Big rush. Penalty marker down as Morton fumbles, picked up by Gregory, but the play is whistled in. There's that new rule in the National Football League. As soon as the quarterback is within the grasp of a defensive player, the whistle is blown, and they blew it before Morton fumbled. There's also a holding penalty on the play. The Broncos called for the hold. That new rule is a big break for the Broncos. It could have been Seattle with the ball inside the 10. Holding 71 offense refused. Fourth down. Claudie Miner, the right tackle for Denver, is called for the hold. There's Claudie, sixth year out of San Diego State. So the penalty has been refused, and Denver will punt out of the end zone. And they got Luke Prestridge and kept him, the eighth round draft choice out of Baylor, specifically for these situations. They want a boomer here. That's Jeff Moore back at us at the Denver 40-yard line. And the punt by Prestridge. Good hang time as Moore has to back pedal. Out to the 50 and fumble! Recovered by the Denver Broncos. Zachary Dixon who put Denver in the immediate hole off the opening kickoff and now more of a rookie out of Jackson State coughing it up Jim Ryan another rookie out of William and Mary picking it up first and ten remote now at the Denver 47 yard line 355 left in this fourth quarter picking his way through is Jensen Jensen to the 46 stopped by Michael Jackson the right linebacker Again, a good call by Craig Morton. After a turnover, you expect a hot quarterback to throw the football. He had the quick opener to Jim Jensen, and he ripped off eight yards. Second and two, three and a half left, fourth quarter. Broncos by three, reeling off 27 straight points, three touchdowns thrown by Morton. As you see the clock running down, Lytle and Keyworth, the setback. Moses in the slot right, up Kurtz wide right. Again to the ground, and breaking clear is Keyword. First down at the 35. Dave Brown, the right cornerback, making the tackle on John Keyword. And I would say the Bronco offense is fired up. That turnover on the punt, they haven't blocked the run well today, and now they're opening holes for Keyword and Jensen, the big fullbacks, and they're just chewing up the yardage. Denver coming at a two and one. Off the overtime win against Atlanta, Seattle at one and two. Off the 27-10 win over Oakland next Sunday, Denver will be at Oakland. That's Jensen bottled up. Robert Hardy, another rookie out of Jackson State, tenth round draft pick who has been a big surprise, starting at left defensive tackle, making the stop 
on Jensen one yard advance second and nine now at the Seattle 33. They'll let it run to the two minute warning Marv. Well Seattle decides yeah, that'll stop, to stop it. <laughs> and right here during the course of the timeout let's go back to New York. Brian Gumbel has an update on what is going on in the NFL. Okay, Marv Albert, thank you very much. Been a very busy Sunday here this fourth week of the season. Let's give you the finals that we've got up to the minute. New England, a winner over San Diego today. Final there, 27-21. That's the first loss for the Chargers. Buffalo Bills come up big. They beat the New York Jets 46-31. Jerry Butler, 10 catches, 255 yards, and four touchdowns. Detroit, a winner for the first time. They beat Atlanta 24-23. Houston in overtime on a 29-yard field goal by Tony Frisch. Keeps the Bengals winless 30-27. Another overtime game. The Vikings beat the Packers 27-21. It's Pittsburgh 17, Baltimore 13. The Steelers are still perfect this year. Washington 17, St. Louis 7. That one a final. Another final, Kansas City over Oakland. Final there 35-7. Philadelphia over the Giants 17-13. Seattle, Denver, you are watching that one. It's a three-point ball game right now. Chicago, a loser 31-16. It's 21-6, Tampa Bay over L.A. New Orleans beating San Francisco 30-21. Let's go back to Mile High and Marvel. All right, Bryant, Marv Albert, and Mike Hafner back at Mile High in Denver. We have a second and about eight for the Broncos following the timeout that was called by Seattle. Denver now at the Seattle 32-yard line. We have two minutes, 17 seconds remaining as you look at Jeff Moore, who fumbled on that last punt return. And in the Broncos, the ball right where they are right here, picking up yardage following that uh, fumble by Moore. Rob Lytle able to shut off one tackler, but not able to get going. Robert Harney all over. Rob Lytle picked up a yard, perhaps third and seven. They spot it at the 31. And here goes Magic Craig Morton again. But first, the two-minute warning. When we resume, Head of a third and seven for Denver at the Seattle 31 with Denver leading by three. Right here, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KING TV, Seattle. Two minutes left, fourth quarter. Seattle and Denver each with two timeouts remaining. It is a third and seven for the Broncos at the Seattle 31. Looking for Upchurch, and he throws it way off the mark. Upchurch with a turn in, covered by Kerry Justin. Stay tuned immediately following. We will be joining Disney's wonderful world, the Love Bug, in progress over most of these stations, except for most mountain and Pacific time zone stations where the program will be seen at its regular time. Interesting that they would punt here, Marv. I don't know. What do you think? I'd run another play, run some more time off the clock, try to get another first down. It's not good field position for Seattle. Well, here is Prestridge this time looking to uh, put it in the corner, but it goes too far, and that means Seattle will take over at the 20-yard line. A minute and 48 left in regulation. And when we resume, it'll be Seattle ball. I'm with you. I'd have gone for the first down. There is the man that could be the guy as we go down to these final minutes. Efren Herrera is two for three thus far today. Seahawks are trailing by three. 37 34 as they take over back at their 20 yard line, and Zorn will have to move his club upfield in a hurry with a minute and 45 remaining. Zorn with time throws it short. Tennant for Ferguson out near the 40 yard line. Duke Ferguson covered by the outside linebacker Bob Swenson. And again, some pressure by a blitzing linebacker, Randy Gratishar, on the blitz, forced Zorn to throw it before he wanted to. Final score Tampa Bay makes it 4 and 0. Oh. In the biggest game in their franchise history, they have defeated the Los Angeles Rams at home 21 to 6. Doug Williams throwing two touchdown passes. 
And final score, New Orleans picks up its first win, defeating San Francisco 30 to 21. Largent in motion. That's Largent on the reception. And he did pick up the first down. He went out across the 30. Charlie West, the extra defensive back, able to follow him across out of bounds. Excellent play by Jim Zorn. What he wanted was to pick up a first down. That was his prime consideration. It'll be a first down at the 30. Ferguson is to the left and Largent to the right. Coming up next on most of these stations, the love bug from the wonderful world of Disney. Now Zor able to complete as Largent stops the clock, runs out across the 36-yard line. And if that play looked familiar, it was the exact same play, this time to the left side of the field. Zorn had completed it to Largent on the right side for the first down. That time Lewis Wright providing coverage for Denver. And it's a second and four now at the Seattle 36. A minute and 34 as you see left in this fourth quarter. And the Broncos leading at 37-34. They were trailing 34-10 in the third quarter. And then it was the Craig Morton show. Here's Zorn who's been very quiet and has deflected. Swenson just wouldn't let anybody get near the ball and you talk about a unit of linebackers that work well together. Tom Jackson tipped the ball up in the air to his teammate and linebacker buddy Bob Swenson and the Broncos are back in business. It's Denver ball at the Seattle 45 with a minute and 28 left in the fourth quarter. Up church left Moses right Lytle and Jensen the setbacks. Jensen gets to the 41 four yard advance second and six and a timeout called by the Seahawks John Harris making the stop on Jensen Seattle now with one timeout left and it appears that one of the uh, Seahawks Terry Beeson is hurt that is Beeson middle linebacker And there is the guy this afternoon. Oh, magic arm did his thing <laughs> when he came in. I wonder if there'll be a question about who starts the game against Oakland next week. Somehow I don't think so. 36-year-old Craig Bort ripping off three touchdowns within two and a half minutes. Big lineup of football here on NBC next week, starting with NFL 79 at 1230. The one o'clock games will include Cleveland at Houston, Pittsburgh playing at Philadelphia, Jets are home for Miami. At two o'clock, Buffalo at Baltimore. These are Eastern times. And at four o'clock, Denver Broncos playing the Raiders in Oakland, Cincinnati at Dallas, and Kansas City will play the Seattle Seahawks. All, of course, preceded by NFL 79 with Brian Gumbel and Mike Adamley. We suggest you consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. Another big day of football here on NBC. And we have had a beauty here this afternoon. And Mike and I will be telecasting Cleveland and Houston, which shapes up as a good one. Cleveland playing tomorrow night against Dallas. Otis Armstrong short of a first down. Houston coming from way back to beat Cincinnati earlier today. And Cleveland with a record of 3-0 playing Dallas tomorrow night. Very interesting that Cleveland, who will play tomorrow night, Cincinnati, 0-4, they had a lead and lost it. Also, Baltimore had a lead and lost it to Pittsburgh. There might be two head coaches in trouble. All right, that's the final timeout for the Seattle Seahawks. You're worse than the Turk. 
<laughs> you want you want firings Mike. <laughs> if you don't win in the national you got to put W's in the column or coaches get nailed. Get the coach says Huffman. We have a minute eight left in regulation time. A third and one is upcoming for the Broncos at the Seattle 36 and Denver just looking to hold on to that football with a three point lead 37 34 that uh, extra point that actually was not even attempted because of the poor handling of the snap by Norris Weiss has proven to be costly although the Seahawks have uh, not yet been able to take advantage. No timeout left for the Seahawks if the Broncos make a first down here the game is over. Lytle and Jensen are the running backs. It's Jensen getting the call and getting the first down. Big one for the Denver Broncos. But continues to run less than a minute left now. John Harris in on the tackle. Michael Jackson also there. There you see we have 50 seconds left. And the Broncos looking to just take their time at this point. One of the greatest comebacks I have ever seen. I've seen this club play for 12 years. I played for the better part of five. I've never seen him come back from 24 points in the third period and win. On the other hand, it's been a long time since the club scored this many points this early against the Denver Broncos. Seattle early third quarter have their 34 points. Morton just looking to run the clock out. There you see we approach 15 seconds, and that will be the final play of the afternoon. The Broncos have to be breathing a sigh of relief as they have been able to come from behind in dramatic fashion, really on 27 consecutive points, led by Craig Morton to defeat the Seattle Seahawks 37 to 34. A spectacular come from behind victory. Sellout crowd of 75,000 enjoying it all as Denver goes three and one, and Seattle with a record of one up and. Three down, the final again, Denver 37, Seattle 34.